Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing a brand new Clean With Me marathon. These videos are some of your favorites that I share on my channel, so I hope this video will be just what you need today. Y'all always love my super long videos, and this particular video is my longest one yet, filled with all the motivation and homemaking inspiration you'll need. So if you're new to my channel or unfamiliar with what a cleaning marathon is, it's actually an idea that my husband came up with a few years ago where I will compile several of my recent cleaning videos into one super long video that you can put up on your phone or your tablet or your TV and clean right along with me without getting interrupted by having to turn on a new video. So grab your to-do list and turn this video on to get motivated and stay in the zone. I am so happy that y'all have loved these videos, so let me know in the comments if you guys are cleaning along with me today or if you are just getting some motivation now and going to put this up another day to clean with me later. I love getting a little glimpse into what your days look like and just connecting with you guys in the comments. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my fall clean and decorate with me for this year or at least my first one of the year. I feel like I'm a little bit behind the times this year getting everything decorated just because we've been so busy with decorating our basement and doing all the makeovers down there. But I am so happy that we are finally to this point because we have our windows open. We are starting to feel a little bit less warm weather and I am just grasping onto the fall as hard as I can this year. So. The first thing that we are going to be doing is of course cleaning everything up and getting everything nice and tidy just so I have a nice clean slate and then I have a ton of other stuff packed in today's video. We are going to be doing a few little DIYs, really simple, really easy ones and then I'm also going to be sharing a few fall recipes along with of course decorating our main living area for fall. So we have a ton to get done so let's go ahead and jump on into it. Okay, so the first place that I usually start is in our living room and kitchen. However, I do really need to clean Kyle's office. It's kind of been like the drop zone for all the makeovers and all the decorating that we have been doing lately. Some you guys have seen, some is still to come, but I just want to really clear this out so he has like a nice office. I also may be adding some fall decorating into this space. Not a whole ton if I do, but I just either way want to get it clean. So we're gonna start in here because that's going to be like the quickest thing that I can tackle and then we'll move on back into the living room and get the kitchen clean as well. So I cannot wait to share all the upcoming makeovers with you guys. And like you may have seen, we just did several basement room makeovers and there are still more of those to come. But I also have a surprise makeover mini series coming later this season. And I'm just so beyond excited to share about that. And also part two of my fall clean and decorate will be up next week. So make sure to come back and see how I'm transforming our bedroom into a cozy space for fall. And I'll also be sharing more recipes in that video as well. But one thing that I wanted to mention is about today's giveaway. So I have shared about this in the past, but there was a time where we could not afford much at all. Seriously, we could not afford really anything. 
and I remember going to friends' houses and just seeing all of the home decor each season, and it would really make me very sad just kind of knowing that we weren't to the point of being able to get any extra things. And so I know that this time of year can be very hard because I've been there, but I want to do little things here and there just to brighten y'all's days. So I am going to be giving away two $50 gift cards. All you have to do to enter is make sure that you're subscribed to my channel because this is a subscriber giveaway, and I just want to be able to give back to all of you guys. And then leave a comment on this video and that's all you have to do to be entered to win So I have finally, aside from doing the floors, tidied up this office. This has seriously been the biggest project. I don't even know if we've got it clean like one time in the last month and a half, just because we've had so many different projects going on. But I know Kyle, when he gets home, will be so excited to see his office just like nice and tidied in here. But now we are going to move into the main living area and into the kitchen and get everything cleaned up in there. California weather, it's like 90 degrees. It's making me hot, and he has the same effect on me. It's just something about the way that he's making me feel. My One thing that I do like to do that I've mentioned a few times is if I have some things that need to go on a different floor, I will actually put everything either like on the stairs or a lot of times I'll put it in a laundry basket if I have a lot of things. And that way I don't have to make a ton of trips up the stairs. I can just kind of gather everything all at once and then I can take one big trip up or two depending on how much I have. But I don't think we're gonna have a ton in here. I think it's just pretty much the daily mess and my random fiddle leaf tree that is on top of the table right now. So I always start cleaning when I'm about to change up a space and as I'm cleaning I also start pulling down any other decor that I won't be using in the upcoming season and that way I'm just kind of taking care of two things on my to-do list all at once. Shaking from the urge of being with him. I act a little dumber when I try to get his number. I'm so nervous that I'm losing grip of myself. Ah, my body's giving up on me. Cause I don't know what to do with my fingertips. Ah, I wanna run him through his hair, but don't stare. I get a little starstruck when I see him. I couldn't hit him even if I tried. If you remember, I want to say it was maybe my summer clean and decorate with me, but I showed you guys all the feathers that come out of the pillows. So I didn't do anything this time because I already had the pillow covers on, but you guys gave me a lot of good ideas. So I think I might end up trying some of the ideas that you guys gave me for next time because it is seriously like such a big mess every time I change out the pillow covers tons of feathers come out of the pillows. That's just life. But now I just want to quickly vacuum off the couch, finish dusting in here, and then I'll move on to the kitchen. And then once I'm done with everything, I will go ahead and do the entire floor, like all at once. This California weather, it's like 90 degrees. It's making me hot and he has the same effect on me. I act a little dumber when I try to get his number. I'm so nervous that I'm losing grip on myself. I get a little starstruck when I see 
know I'm going to be getting some questions about why I have my fiddle leaf tree sitting on our kitchen table. Let me tell you, we have our two new kittens. You've probably seen them. If you're either following me over on Instagram or if you've seen some of the basement makeovers, they've made an appearance in probably every single one of those. And they have been the funnest little additions to our family, but they have started to pee in my fiddle leaf tree. And it's just completely broken my heart because some of the leaves are starting to kind of droop and it obviously is smelling like cat pee, which is not a pleasant smell in the slightest. So yesterday I took it outside and I really like drenched it, but I think I'm actually going to have to resoil it just because I can still smell the cat pee. And so I think I'm gonna have to take it back outside and do a little bit more work to it. I'm not gonna do that right now, but that is why I had it on our kitchen table because I had to bring it inside just so it didn't get like a, sh like a cold shock last night because it did get down to the 50s here, which may or may not be cold to you guys, but here it has been like in the 90s. Sometimes now it's dropping into the 80s and 70s. And so 50 is just a bit cold for us right now. So anyway, that's why my fiddle leaf tree is sitting on our kitchen table, but we are going to go ahead and get all of this nice and clean. This is like the heart of our home and this is, I feel the place that really motivates me to really, really keep cleaning because once our kitchen is clean, it just feels like everything in our house is so much cleaner. So we're gonna go ahead and get all that done and then we'll move on to the recipes, the DIYs and the decorating. So if you have been here for a while, you know that I love my plants but with fall and Christmas coming, I know that my decor is going to be a bit busier than the rest of the year. So on this day, I actually went around and started moving a lot of my live plants to other rooms in the house, like Kyle's office, for example, just to kind of keep the main rooms a bit more simple since I know that I'll be adding in extra decor. I did not want to be getting rid of my live plants, obviously, but I just kind of wanted to remove them from the main space. And so that's just how I ended up doing this. But I think in the end, he ended up gaining about three or four more live plants in his office on this. I don't wanna grow old I wish I could turn back time mm -mm -mm. Stay up all night singing songs on the terrace We didn't mind sitting out in the cold It wasn't possible to make us embarrassed We were free So usually unloading the dishwasher is a chore that our three boys will do each day, but with online school starting this past week, we are still just getting back into a schedule and it's definitely taking us a while to get the kinks worked out. So usually they have been unloading the dishwasher later in the day, but since I was needing to clean the dishes in the sink now, I just went ahead and took care of it myself. But let me know how long does it usually take your household to get into a new schedule or routine? I feel like we honestly used to be a little bit quicker about getting into a new routine, but now it seems like it takes us a good solid few weeks. But we had to move on. Life ran away from us. If I could go back, be 17 again. Yeah, I would just to see all my friends. Running around the city acting crazy like we used to do. Ooh, ooh, do, 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 do. I wish I could turn back time. Oh, ooh, ooh. Stay up all night singing songs on the terrace. We didn't mind sitting out in the cold. So I've mentioned this before, but sometimes I find hand washing dishes so relaxing, especially if I'm not in a super crazy rush. And I think that it's because I used to do this with my mom growing up, so it's just kind of a good memory for me. But I would love to hear from you, what is something that you enjoy that most people don't? Sit on the grass and go damn, I don't wanna grow old. 
stay up all night singing songs on the terrace. We didn't mind sitting out in the cold. It wasn't possible to make us embarrassed. We were free. Do you remember stealing smokes from your parents? Sometimes we got a bit out of control. When they found out we ran. So if you've watched my videos in the past, I know that you've seen me do this about a thousand times, but if you're new and wondering what in the world I'm doing here, I actually just like to add a few drops of essential oil into my sink once it's clean and it will make your sink smell so much better. And I also get a lot of questions about what essential oils I use. So I will leave a link to my favorite essential oil brand down below. I have used this brand for years and I love them because they are amazing quality, but they also don't break the bank. And then to clean my stove top and also my fridge that you'll see me do in just a minute, I am just using my two favorite e-cloths, which are totally a cleaning must have for me. My e-cloth general purpose cloth and also their glass and polishing cloth. They are just the best way to clean your stainless steel appliances on a daily basis. So if you guys have not ever tried e-cloth, I would highly suggest checking them out. They clean and disinfect with just water. It's just incredible how well they work. All right, everything is looking pretty bare because I've taken away most of all like the seasonal decor, but everything is nice and clean. I hope you guys can see how clean it is. It looks really good for the next five minutes or so, but the last thing that I have to do is just tackle the floors. So we're gonna do that now, and then we will get on to the recipes, the DIYs, and the decorating. So always the last thing that I do when I'm cleaning is my floors. So I'm just using my Shark Apex Uplight. It is seriously the best vacuum I have ever used in my life. It just has the most amazing section and I always get tons of questions about it. So I'm gonna leave a link down below for the best deal that I can find on it right now. Sometimes I find really, really good deals and I'll try to share this with you guys, but the deal that I found right now is still about $80 off of normal retail price. So I'm gonna leave that down below for you guys in case if you are in the market for getting one, I just cannot recommend this vacuum enough.
Okay, so it is actually the next day. I got finished cleaning with everything and then I had to help the kids with homework. We had to do dinner and we just, I kind of ran out of time. So today I'm starting out a little bit earlier on in the day but we have still a lot to get done. First, I'm going to share with you guys my DIY. It's kind of like a fall bucket list DIY. I had this idea a few weeks ago and I've been so excited to actually get it done. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys and I hope, I hope, hope, hope that it turns out as good as it is in my head. But we are going to get that done first and then we are going to start decorating for fall and bringing all the fall feelings and fall vibes into our home. And I hope that that will really inspire you guys to either decorate for fall or just kind of get in the fall vibe. I am so excited. I feel like this year has been so crazy that we just kind of need a little bit of extra coziness in our life. So I'm really excited for that. And then once we are done, I'm going to be sharing a couple of different fall recipes. And I also cannot wait to share those. They are so delicious. I know you guys are going to love them. Even though I'm getting started a little bit earlier today, we still have a lot to get done. So let's go ahead and get to it. I feel like a lot of times if you do a bucket list, you just write down on a piece of paper a list and then it gets lost or it's just like out of sight, out of mind kind of thing and you end up getting none of it done. So I wanted to do something and keep it somewhere where we would really see it and it would kind of remind us. But I also wanted to make it kind of look more like decor. So I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you what my idea is. So for this fall bucket list DIY, first you are going to get a collage frame and honestly you could do this with just a clipboard from the Dollar Tree as well, but next you are going to make a list of things that you want to do this fall and then print out nice copies of your bucket list ideas like I've done here or you can also just write them on a piece of paper nicely and then cut them to size to fit into your frame and then once you've put all your list ideas into the frame, you can put this up as decor and when you do something from your list, you just take a photo of you doing that activity, print it out, and then replace the printed words with the photo and it kind of brings your fall bucket list to life and helps you remember what you did that fall. If any of you guys end up doing this DIY, I would love if you would either come back to this video and tell me about it and just kind of let me know how it went. Or also, if you are on social media, I would love if you tagged me on Facebook or Instagram. I just love seeing the DIYs that you guys recreate that I share or the recipes as well. All right, so we are ready for the first hiccup of this whole thing. I looked on the back of this and it said two four by sixes, two five by sevens, and da da da. I went on and I ordered those size prints with the mat in here. It looks like they're actually about half an inch smaller on every single picture. So most of these, the words are getting cut off a little bit and so I'm just gonna have to go back and resize them and try to reprint them or write them in. But overall, it turned out really good, just the sizes were a little bit off. So now that we got our quick little DIY done, I am going to start bringing out all of my fall decor and we're going to get to decorating, yay! This is like the best part, right? So I think I'm going to start out in the living room, even though this is like the biggest, most challenging part for me. I feel like this is kind of where the center of attention as far as like seasonal decor goes. And so I'm gonna try to start out there, but if I start to get stuck, I will just continue to move on and kind of fill in the blanks as I go. Also, a lot of these items are from this year and then a lot of them are also from previous years. But anything that I can find online, I will link below and then eventually I will be doing a fall home tour as well. Before we start actually decorating, I am going to light a candle just to start kind of feeling that fall mood in here. And I feel like adding fall scents into the room, especially when you're decorating, just helps really get you into the spirit of everything. So right now I'm going to be starting to light the leaves from Bath & Body Works. I actually have a few other fall candles coming my way from a few of my favorite candle shops, but this is the one that we're gonna start with today. Stars, I wanna drive a faster car. 
troubles to rise Blow smoke through my cigarette City lights looking fine And I know this is my time now So as I am decorating, you will see me adding items in, moving things around, and just taking away pieces constantly. This is all part of the decorating process, and I would really just encourage you to keep going. Try not to get discouraged by this. If you're starting to feel a little frustrated by not getting something right, take a step back for a moment and just kind of keep playing around with it until it feels perfect to you. And also, if you're really struggling within an area, walk away and come back to it later, and sometimes you just need that time and space to kind of realize what a certain area needs to feel complete. Stars. I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me Nothing can break me So here I'm starting to add on my pillow covers and I've shared this before but I feel like pillow covers are so amazing because they are often cheaper and they are also so easy to wash in stores so that you don't end up having a whole closet full of throw pillows. I have found that typically the best place to find tons of different pillow covers is actually on Amazon and every single one of the pillow covers that I'm using today are from Amazon so I will have them all linked down below but they just have so so many to choose from depending on what your style is so I would definitely suggest checking them out. Try not to hold me down, feel alive when I'm in this town. Look at those beautiful stars, I want to take a trip to Mars. Nothing can break me, no, nothing can break me. Okay, so far I'm loving how everything is turning out. I feel like as soon as I put that main sign on, I just got so happy. I just feel like it's just starting to feel fall in here and I'm just so happy now. So I feel like I am making it somewhat simple. Um, I don't want it to feel overwhelming, so I'm trying to do just enough decor and not too much. So I probably won't be using all the decor that I have, but I'm just kind of playing around with it. Now I'm going to change out the pillow covers um, in the entryway, and then I think we'll move on into the kitchen and dining room. Without her, I'm in the dark. When I make my way, I stumble and I fall. I'm a blind man without his cane. I'm the ocean without the waves. The radio's playing songs, telling me that I should try to move. I cannot figure out what I like best. You guys will have to let me know. Do you guys like basically the three pillows that we have right here with the two brown stripes mustard one in the middle? Or do you just like two pillows? And there's a few options for that too. So with the two pillows, I could put these, this little floral set right here with the two pillows like that. Or I could do just the more neutral ones like that. I cannot decide. I could also face them the other way. <laughs> so many different ways we could go about this, but I'm kind of struggling with like figuring out which one I like the most. 
Actually, that looks kind of nice too. I don't know. You guys have to let me know what you think. I could also try this. Does the mustard go? I don't know. All right, let me know your guys' thoughts. I think for now I'm gonna do, I think I might do just the two pillows right there like that. But let me know your guys' thoughts because I feel like I'm totally torn on this one. I don't know, let me know. Now moving into my kitchen, one of the biggest things that I do in here is changing out my pantry wreath and also my dish towels. Now dish towels are usually pretty easy to find cheap, but wreaths can get a bit pricey sometimes. But whenever I go to find a new wreath, I never will spend more than $25 on them. And usually I don't spend any more than 20. And that's because I usually find them at places like Marshalls or Thrifted or just on sale at various stores. If you keep your eyes out, you can definitely find super cute wreaths that are actually affordable. And it's amazing because they can be used in so many more places in your home than you actually may think. And they also can be used year after year as long as you take care of them. What do you think of the wreath? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the towels? Yeah. No, I like it all. I think it's all awesome. Do you like the entryway I area? have got no complaints. Talking about these pillows? Yeah. Yeah. They're not like super fall. They're like pretty neutral. Yeah, but they tie in the main room. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's great. It's very fall vibey. Like if yeah. Tina likes to go like that vibe, it's very fall It's vibe. like cozy. Yeah, it's cozy. But I didn't want it to be overwhelming. No, I like it. I like it a lot. I think I nailed it. Thanks, babe. Never knew that it could feel this way when you lie next to someone You don't even need to play pretend cause You find the way you are All right, everything's looking so folly in here So the next place that I'm gonna go is actually up I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's uh, like right there um, Right next to my office I'm going to decorate a few things just on like a little bookshelf that we have I actually might be moving that bookshelf eventually sorry for that lighting but i think i got this little wheelbarrow i want to say oh yeah he was from hobby lobby a while back when i went i just have various little pumpkins a lot of these are like from the target dollar spot and i'm just going to fill that and i think that's my plan for up there so there's not a ton but just to kind of be a little bit festive up there and that's our next spot to go this is the area that i'm going to be decorating it's obviously set up for summer right now this is my office, and then down here is the living room. So this kind of just has all the boys' books. I'm probably going to end up moving these downstairs since all their bedrooms are downstairs now, but I wanted to decorate this area either way. I want to know you better. Give me every detail. I won't judge you as you know. I could stay forever. So now that I'm upstairs, I have been getting tons of questions from y'all about what rooms we have upstairs. So I'm actually going to link our house tour up in the iCards for you guys. But upstairs we do have a guest bathroom and then what used to be our boys shared bedroom is now a guest room since they moved down to the finished basement. And then the old playroom slash guest room is now my office. So both of those were filmed and they are in my makeover playlist which is always linked down below for you guys in case if you miss them and want to watch. So just stay for a little while. 
Do you want to cook with me in a few? You would like that to cook with me? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm done hanging this one just a minute and then we get to cook pumpkin French toast. What is it like? It's like regular French toast but with pumpkin. It's so yummy. Inside of pumpkin? Well, you just like put... pumpkin seeds? No, no pumpkin seeds. Yeah, you put pumpkin flavor inside. Is it pumpkin like juice? Like, like smashed up pumpkin. It'll be so yummy. And we have to crack a lot of eggs. Please can I do the eggs first? Yes. As soon as I'm done putting this on the wall. Oh, don't do that. Okay. As soon as I'm done putting it on the wall, we'll make pumpkin French toast together. <laughs> Are you excited? <laughs> a lot of it. Thank you. To hang the DIY fault bucket list, I am just using Velcro command strips because this won't be a permanent decor piece. And I also wanted to make sure to put it somewhere that we could see it regularly so that we don't just forget about it and just let the season fly by without doing the things that we most wanted to do this fall season. It just took some time Now I just hope that you stay for a little while You fix what's broken When you make that smile So just stay for Okay, everything is all decorated. So finally we are going to get to sharing the recipes. So first I'm going to be sharing a pumpkin French toast. It is incredibly easy and super festive. And one thing that I do like to do with anytime I make any kind of French toast is actually make it ahead of time and put it in the freezer. And then anytime we have like busy mornings, which is all the time I feel, we can just pop it right into the toaster and it's perfect and good to go. Or of course you can just make this fresh too, but I did ask Noah earlier when I was finishing decorating if he wanted to join me and he is super excited because I told him he could crack eggs. That's been something he's been working on and he has been getting really good at it. And every time he gets a chance to crack eggs, he jumps on it. So I'm going to go grab Noah and then we will start making some yummy pumpkin French toast. And then I'm going to make the most coziest soup ever. I actually learned this from my mother-in-law, so I think Kyle and I are probably going to make that tonight. So I will share that one with you guys as well once we are done with the French toast. <gasps> Pumpkin French toast? Pumpkin French toast. Are you ready? Huh? It's going to be good sure. as Adam. Good as Adam? Huh? What does that mean? It means it's like good, but it's good as like an earthquake. It's good as an earthquake? Huh? Perfect. Let's just cook right here. Okay. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. We gotta put it up here first. Those are the eggs you're gonna be doing. Right. All right, so Noah, so what we do we need? need? eggs and... Nutmeg? Nutmeg? Nutmeg and pumpkin. What's it? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. And what's Bread. that one? Bread. You ready? But that's not all the stuff. There's lots of other stuff to do.
So the pumpkin French toast is super, super simple to make. You can go back and screenshot the recipe so that it's easy to save, but it's so much fun to just change up the classic dishes to feel a little bit special and something seasonal. And this recipe is exactly that. And it's also the perfect recipe to make with your kids because it is so simple. Over the years, I have loved bringing my boys into the kitchen with me and making these special memories together. It's just such a special time to spend together. And I love seeing how proud my kids are when they get to tell everyone that they help make the food. It's definitely something that takes some patience and a little bit of extra time, but it is so worth it. Even in my wildest dreams Oh yeah I've been dreaming so much lately about your face when you're smiling. It's the only thing that saves me. Mm -mm. Hey, I don't know if I told you that I think you're beautiful. And now oh, I can't wait to hold you. Yeah, you pull me up when I'm falling down. And I don't know what I would do without you. Yeah, you pull me up when I'm falling down. This next recipe I got from Kyle's mom. It is Zupa Toscana. I think they kind of did like a copycat recipe of Olive Garden, but she said over the years they've just kind of changed things up. So I'm not sure what the original recipe is, but I'm gonna share the one that they made for us when we went to Montana recently and it is so, so good. So I will also have these recipes over on my website, which is thiscrazylifevlog.com, and then I'm also going to put them here in the video. So either way, you can make sure that you can print them out, screenshot them, however, and make them yourself as well. So let's get to it. You ready? I'm ready. Are you making sausage I'm or potatoes? I'm making uh, sausage. All right, I'll do potatoes. <laughs> you're so dumb. Okay, so first you're just going to chop up your onion and then you're going to start sauteing that. Just this whole thing of sausage? Yeah. I would wager <laughs> no more than 10 times has someone said, that's too much sausage. I say that on pizza all the time. That's just, I don't like it's it. just disgraceful. Ooh, that sizzled. Ooh, that sizzled though. I was going to add the sausage into the pot. And while he's doing that, I'm just chopping up the potatoes into little, like, bites. Jimmy Dean, no one ever said there's too much sausage. Jimmy Dean, no one's ever said there's too much sausage. Yeah, like that. So for the Zupa Toscana, I also have shared the recipe card so that you can go back and screenshot and that will have the exact measurements and directions for you guys. But it's actually so funny because I have been to Olive Garden several times and I've never ever tried the Zupa Toscana. So the first and only time that I ever have tried this soup was from Kyle's mom. And the moment we tasted it, we were both hooked. So if you make this soup and you have tried the Olive Garden Zupa Toscana, you'll have to let me know how similar these taste. 
Here, it doesn't matter what it says on garlic. I always do this much. Wow, that's a lot. That's what I always do. No matter how much garlic it says, you always put a heaping tablespoon plus. You always love it. The garlic is so good. The energy is circular, <laughs> a circle. In with the good, block the bad. In with the block the bad. Circle. <laughs> Do you guys know what movie that's from? I'm probably quoting it wrong, but... Yeah, it's not 100% right, but... An American classic if you haven't seen it. Is this gonna overflow? I don't think so. I don't, th ah! I don't think we have enough... Um, this is dangerous! Ah! Dangerous! Well, it's cause it's not... Oh, this is perfect. There's plenty of room. Like it's meant to be. Look at that. Now, we slow boil for 15 to 20 minutes. Oh. Hey guys, this is the good I got from Amazon. I'll make sure to link it below. It fits all your pots. It does fit all your pots. It does fit all your pots. And then you can get rid of all your other lids, because then you don't need like 15,000 lids. So now everything is in the pot and we're just letting it slow boil for about 20 minutes or so and then we'll come back and add in the rest of the ingredients. But this is seriously like the ultimate <laughs> comfort food. <laughs> what did I, you do? The sprinklers were not working right. I thought I'd run out and fix them real quick. I'm soaked. Can you see how soaked he is? Yeah, so. I thought no big deal, I'll just go fix them real fast. I just looked up and you were like, so you went at the back door. <laughs> yeah. Stumbling out of bed and I still got you in my head from all those pretty words you said. It's like I'm wasted. Every time I see your face, I'm losing track of time and space. I don't know where I am. It's like I'm wasted. Okay, so we need to add in one cup of heavy whipping cream into a bowl, and then we're also going to add in one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. Look at you go. Hashtag husband goals, am I right? <laughs> okay, I saw that once on Instagram. Somebody said, hashtag husband goals, and I haven't let it go. <laughs> they said that to you? No, they said it on your post about me, though. Oh, is that where you got it That's from? That's where I got it from was Instagram. <laughs> Somebody commented that, yeah. <laughs> Whoever commented that, I have not heard, uh, I have not heard the end of it. Anytime he does like anything good, he's like, hashtag husband goals, am I right? What? <laughs> what are you doing? You spin the bowl. Were you being serious? Do you not do that? Well, I guess I was just thinking you were trying to be no, fancy. You, no, you whisk and spin the bowl so it gets the stuff off the side. And this is just, it's too advanced for you, okay? I don't know, I just can't take it seriously. <laughs> I feel like this super chef, like this is how you do it. I don't know if I'm a chef. Husband goals, I mean, yes. We're gonna add that and the kale and the bacon to the pot and stir. Boil for three minutes or until the broth thickens slightly and then you add your salt, pepper, steak seasoning, and cayenne if you should like. That. So your cream mixture, oh. the kale, and then oh, bacon. bacon bits, because I did not want to cook bacon today. said I I will stand by you forever and I won't waste it all right so that is it for part one of my fall 2020 clean and decorate 
I hope that you enjoyed watching and spending some time with me. I hope this gave you lots of fall vibes and motivated you and gave you some fall decorating ideas. Don't forget to get entered into my fall clean and decorate giveaway. And also make sure that you're subscribed if you are not already. Thank you so, so much for being here and watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my fall clean and decorate with me. Today we are going to be focusing on my bedroom and I am so excited just to start decorating in here. Of course, we're going to be cleaning because obviously that's not even the worst part. It's like all in front of me. I have a ton of laundry that I have to put away, but once we get everything nice and clean, we are going to start bringing in some fall colors, like really warm colors and lots of different textures and just kind of bringing like a really cozy fall feeling in here. I cannot wait to see how it, everything turns out. In my head, it's amazing. So I really hope that it turns out the same, but it's actually really late right now. So this is going to be an after dark fall clean and decorate with me, but I know that you guys love the after dark videos. I feel like they're just so relaxed so it's actually about 9 30 right now pitch black outside and the boys are sleeping so my house is pretty quiet but I'm going to take this downtime just to focus on my bedroom and I think it will be amazing to not have to be interrupted and really just kind of take my time focusing on what I want this room to become so let's go ahead and get on into it maybe I shouldn't call you leave a message at all so i try to be patient cause nothing's written on the wall yeah it's too soon to mention how i've begun to feel that i want your attention this time it is for real oh baby love me like you So the first thing that I wanted to do was start to tackle the laundry that I had. A lot of times I found that I've been starting to do laundry later at night just because this is kind of some quiet time. It's a chore that I don't really enjoy doing and so I find that when I do it at night I can usually put on a little show or something like that just to kind of occupy my time and it tends to not feel like it's as much of a chore. So that's just what I'm doing here is going ahead and getting all of the laundry hung up and then once I'm done with that I'll go through and really clear off our dressers and put everything away. And you'll probably notice a little bit later on that I won't be making my bed. And that's actually because I got some brand new bedding for fall and winter this year. A lot of times we just use the same bedding, but this year I've kind of had my eye on a new bedding set. And so I'm really excited to get that put on today and just share that with you. So if you're wondering why I'm not making my bed or putting anything on my bed nicely, that is the reason. This is definitely an area that I need to tackle once again. 
I just need to declutter a lot of things. We just have way too many clothes once again. And I also need to make it just a lot nicer in here because I don't know, it's not working out so great as you can see. So that video will be coming up as soon as I can get to it. I don't know what it is about our dressers. I feel like dressers are just magnets for clutter and anything that doesn't really either have a home or you're really in a rush and you feel like you don't have time to put everything away. It's just dropped onto your dresser. And I feel like that's something that makes our rooms feel so much more cluttered and so much dirtier. And so every single time that I go through and I clear off our dressers, our room instantly feels 10 times cleaner, even if there's still items on the floor just clearing the dressers off makes a huge difference. So I would urge you to take a few minutes today and just clear off your dressers if they're messy like mine were. And I can pretty much guarantee it will make a huge difference when you walk into your room and just see those cleared off dressers. We'll work it out, you'll see. If we get in a car and drive someplace far, yeah, we could go for a ride. I'm just going around and dusting all of my surfaces off. I feel like I probably don't dust as much as I should or as much as I would like to, but especially during the seasons when I'm going to be decorating, I really take advantage of this time to really dust everything off. And I do get a lot of questions about my duster. So the duster that I'm using is from Grove Collaborative, but you can also find it on Amazon. So I will link it down below for you, but it also is reusable. So I really like that. And it works really, really well just grabbing onto the dust and not spreading it around. You to myself. We can stay in hotels, just living off the edge. Only good times ahead. So let me put a smile upon your face. Maybe make your worries go away. Okay, I finally have everything so clean minus the floor. I'm going to go ahead and vacuum that because it means a good vacuum for sure. I do still have some pillows right here and the bed is not made because I'm actually going to be putting on some new sheets and new like bedding that I got for winter and fall. So that's why I did not bother with that. And then I also have this throw blanket and a pillowcase that is also going to be part of the new bedding set that I got. So I'm just going to be setting them there for now, but let me go ahead and vacuum and then we will start decorating and making this super cozy. I did also go through and just take away like any extra decor that I know I'm not going to be using in the fall scheme. And I do still have like a few of my plants in here that are not really fall, but I think that's why I really want to just go with like more colors in here. And then I can still keep like all of my live plants in here, but it will still just feel very fall. So let's go ahead and vacuum. So one thing that I'm actually going to do in here is slow vacuum. I might do a quick pass through and then I'm gonna go back through and do a slow vacuum. Basically, it's just exactly how it sounds. You just vacuum your floors very, very, very slowly. And it's just amazing how much more will come out of your floors if you do this. It takes a little bit more time, obviously, but I feel like it's worth it to do it at least like once a month or something. And it's something that honestly, sometimes I just forget to do, but when I do have an extra minute, like at night, I do like to kind of take a few extra minutes and just do this. And I feel like it makes a huge difference in our floors. to be someone else I would and like all of you mm -mm. I know that I'm obvious forget I'm made this way but why didn't I stay when I had the chance maybe 
Okay, so I had an empty canister when I started. I just did one quick pass through the floor and you can see just how much was picked up in the one quick pass. But I'm gonna empty this really quickly just so that when I slow vacuum, we can see exactly like how much more it picked up. Now I did just do this probably like a week ago. So I'm not sure if it's going to pick up a ton, but last time I was blown away with how much more I picked up when I slow vacuum. So I just wanna see if I can get any more a week later. Okay, so this is how much came out of the floor when I just slow vacuumed. It is disgusting. I honestly feel like I got basically just as much, maybe a little bit less than I got the first time I went over it. But you can see, I don't know, I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like it's like sandy and really like dirt and just like really, really like deep stuff. So if you have allergies, actually, this would be the perfect thing to do. But I would challenge you guys to go through, especially if you have carpet, I don't really think this makes a difference if you just have like hard floors. So if you have rugs or carpet, go through, do, just do like a regular pass with your vacuum, empty your canister, and then do a slow vacuum and see how much more is just being left on your floors. It will, one, gross you out, and two, make you realize slow vacuuming totally has to be like a normal thing that we do because that is just disgusting that that was all going to be just left in my carpet. From the sunshine on my face So dehydrated, don't know what to say Who's sleeping by my side? What did I do last night? Can someone make this headache go away? Yesterday was supposed to be quiet Being to myself and sit in silence until I got a call, my friend showed up at my door. They wanted me to go out for a while. We were dancing in the dark. Okay, before we start decorating in here, I actually am going to go get a cup of herbal tea. Just something to kind of like relax and make this really enjoyable and just kind of take my time with it. I'm also going to find a fall candle to light in here just so I can start like smelling that. I love either finding like a fall diffuser blend and just diffusing some oils or doing a fall candle. I feel like either is perfect, but tonight I'm just gonna make it really easy and I'm going to do a candle. It's just like very cozy. So let's go do that and then we'll come back in here and decorate. entirely sure where I'm going to put this candle but I'm gonna go ahead and light it just so we have some nice scents in here these are some of my favorite candles they're on Etsy I'll link them below but this one smells so good I haven't even burnt it yet obviously but just like smelling it as it is smells so good it's like apple cinnamon clove is a scent 
but it is amazing. I'm super excited for this one. I've been waiting for this one to arrive and it finally did, but these are like coconut wax candles, so they clean or they burn cleaner and they also last way, way long. So I feel like whenever I get these ones, I usually get a couple every season and they just will last and last and last and I just love them. A lot of times I'll actually burn them while I'm working upstairs, like while I'm editing in my office and it's just super relaxing. But now I have my tea. I'll probably have to let it cool down before I can really enjoy it. But I'm gonna go ahead and start decorating and we're gonna start with the bed. So I am almost just laughing at myself right now because I was so excited for my new sheet set. I've been so excited for it. It felt really nice. There was actually a more expensive one that I wanted at Target and I was like, no, I'm going to stay on budget. This one was just a lot better on the budget, but I thought it was a full sheet set and then I go to open it and it is just the fitted sheet. I just could not believe that. I was like opening it up. I'm like, where... Where's the rest of it? Like where are the pillowcases? Where is the flat sheet? Like I could not find any of it. And then I looked at the package again and it said fitted sheet. And I was like, oh, okay. That's probably why it felt super nice still. Like almost just as good of quality as the more expensive ones that I saw, but it was like a quarter of the price. That is exactly why, because <laughs> it's like a quarter of the set. So <sighs> life has a way of making you either really frustrated or just laugh at yourself and I'm choosing to laugh because there's no point. Being frustrated about it is not going to change anything. So I have a really nice brand new sheet set that I'll get a lay on, but I'm going to have to put on like my old flat sheet and my old pillowcases and then I'll figure out what to do from here. Either go get the rest of the set or, or just stick with my other ones. Maybe I don't even know. <sighs> Life. It happens to all of us. And it makes, makes me that you are no longer with me What if I said I'm sorry? What if I make a scene? Wouldn't that make you mine again? All I ever need Didn't I make you laugh? Didn't I make you smile? So the new bedding set that I got was from the new Target line at Casa Luna and I am in love with it. It is a bit pricier so it's definitely something that you kind of have to splurge on a little bit. I was actually able to use a lot of gift cards anytime I have an anniversary or a birthday or Christmas. I'm always asking for gift cards. I feel like that's just so fun for me to be able to then spend that on things that I normally wouldn't spend our money on. And it also helps me be able to grab things that are a little bit out of budget, like this bedding normally would have been a bit out of budget for us. And so this way I was able to pick it up this year by using a gift card. So if there's something on your wish list that you've been eyeing, definitely check and see if you have any stashed away gift cards because that is the perfect way to just treat yourself to something a little bit extra. And as usual, I will be linking anything I can find online down below for you in case if there's anything that you love that you would like to pick up for yourself. Didn't I make you feel like you were happy for a while? Look out, here she comes. The woman that I love. It's too bad she'll never know. I can't tell her how I feel Because she has someone who makes her happy I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least I try to be Cause I hope that I'm not showing her How I feel for her But she won't feel the same for me
So all these little pumpkins and decor right here are things that we've had for years. A lot of times I really try to find some neutral items that will hold up and then I'm still going to love year after year. And then each year I might just pick up a few different things and kind of add to the collection. And that's one of my best tips when you're looking to find new decor is make sure that you're not getting too, too trendy items. Try to get some things that are very neutral and something that is just going to stand the test of time. Like she stole my heart Without knowing she did But I guess that it will pass Yeah, I can't be the only one I cannot get this to drape right I'm wanting it to look like it was just thrown there You know, like thrown there perfectly <laughs> That's like the goal I'm going for Just like very casual, but it is not happening right now. I wonder if there's something like that where it's almost like a bundle. It's actually kind of just like that. Like, literally just thrown there. There we go. Got it. So I think I'm actually done. I just didn't want to do too much in here. I didn't want to come in here and feel overwhelmed, but I did want to have a touch of fall and just like that really cozy. I feel like the bed is definitely like the focal piece in the room and just the place that really like screams cozy and fall. I love this little bench and just the addition of little pumpkins down here. I think it, I don't know, I just love it. And then here and there we just have like little pops of like orange and like the burnt orange color that I'm kind of doing throughout the house and just like the deep rich colors. So I think, I think I'm done. I might, I don't know. I've been kind of debating doing like maybe some lamb's ear up here or something, some kind of just very neutral greenery with picks of something kind of along these lines, just some different pops of color up there. I'm kind of debating doing that, but I'm not sure. So let me know if you think that would look good or if you feel like it would just be too much or if you feel like it's just not needed. I'm just not sure. I just, I want the room to feel very, very cozy, but not overdone. Just like little subtle pops here and there. So I'm gonna have to take everything out because right now like I have the rest of my decorations and some of the bedding done in here. So I'm gonna clear everything out and then I'll get a good look of like how everything is truly looking and we'll see, we'll go from there. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? Okay, so overall, I like most of it. I feel like I love this. I feel like that is just so cozy and so inviting. So I love that. I actually love this. I'm not sure if that um, my little ponytail plant is like too summery. I might end up moving that up to my office but it is orange, I'm not sure. I do still like it there, so I'm not sure. This, I actually love up here too. I feel like this is perfect. This, again, I'm not sure move like my little fiddle or if I should leave it, I'm unsure. So I'm gonna try something. I have one idea for this, so I'm gonna pull a different vase that I have. I got it on clearance recently, but the color on it I think will work really good in here, so I'm gonna try to 
put it here and then I'm also gonna try it over here and kind of see what like which one I like better Could we'll see. It be to make the ground shine like cold until winter comes until winter comes until winter comes it really makes me wonder So you'll see at the very end of this video, I actually am going to change one thing up and I feel like it ended up making a huge difference. But other than that one change, this is how everything turned out and I love how subtle it is and just how warm and cozy it ended up feeling. But you'll have to let me know if you tend to go for more subtle in your bedroom or if you kind of go all out and just really decorate everything. I kind of go back and forth, but I feel like in my bedroom, I tend to go a little bit more subtle and just keep it really calm and peaceful in there. But I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope it was really nice and relaxing for you. And don't forget to make sure you're subscribed. I hope you have the most amazing day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Yeah, it makes me I used to pick you up and drive to a place we could talk for hours mm -hmm. Sometimes we'd run out of words to say but we didn't mind Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing a very cozy fall homemaking and clean with me video. So we are of course going to be tidying up the house. We actually recently just got back from our very last camping trip of the year, celebrating Kyle's my 11 year anniversary. So we have a lot to get done, just kind of like getting the house back in order. And then once we are done with that, we are going to head on into the kitchen and I'm gonna be sharing a few really cozy and warm comfort foods, perfect for fall. These are going to be great if you want to make ahead and just stash in your fridge or you can make whenever you're ready for them, but they are so delicious and I'm just super excited to share them with you guys. But let's go ahead and jump on into it. I wanna hear you say it. Falling out, we have reached disaster. Don't know where we're gonna be after. And we do it all again and again and again and again. Again and again and again and again. We're falling, falling down, we fading. But I know, I know that we can save it. Cause we're like Alpha and Omega Whatever happens doesn't matter I know we can sort it out Alpha and Omega Even if we go a lot of breakers down I know we are Alpha and Omega Whatever happens doesn't matter I know we can sort it out Alpha and Omega Alpha and Omega Like the waves pull you down underwater We're fun until we hit the bottom So the first thing that I wanted to do on this day was just get a load of laundry going because that's something that can kind of be working behind the scenes while I'm actually cleaning the rest of the living area. And then once I got that done, I just started tackling the living room. I've been kind of going back and forth in my mind on whether I want to start with the hardest task first 
or the one that gives me the most instant gratification and just kind of like motivates me to keep going. I usually call this my domino chore, but I feel like there's really benefits to both sides. On one, you are tackling the hardest project first and it's out of the way. And on the other hand, doing the one that is quickest and easiest just kind of gets the ball rolling and it's really not as intimidating to get going with. And I feel like a lot of times I end up going back and forth on this, kind of depending on my mood when I'm starting. If I'm really, really dreading it, sometimes I will just start with the easiest task. And if I'm feeling pretty motivated, then I'll go ahead and start with the most daunting task and just get that out of the way first. But let me know, what do you guys typically do? Do you go for the hardest task first or the one that's the we easiest? So we are making some good progress. The living room is totally picked up, minus the toy bin that I'm actually gonna have the boys come up and grab and bring down to put down in their rooms. We got everything in the foyer put away that was just drug in from camping. And then I also got that little laundry done. Now we are going to tackle the kitchen. I have like a thousand and one dishes to do, of course. And then we are going to start cooking after that. Next, I just started moving into my kitchen. I feel like I have been saying this for a while, but I feel like our household has just been struggling lately with especially keeping routines of like just daily cleaning. I don't know what has been going on, if we've just been really, truly way more busy than normal, or if we're just a little bit off kilter right now because of everything going on, or just everything new going on this fall, like new school, but I feel like we have been struggling with the routine, so I'm really going to try to focus on doing a really easy routine and something that's manageable for our family, and once I get that figured out, I will definitely share that with you guys, because seriously, every single video I share with you guys, our house is just kind of messy everywhere, and I feel like that's just kind of how it's been lately and it's driving me a little bit crazy so if you guys have any tips definitely let me know but that's something that I'm going to be working on really hard over the next month or so. We actually had that string tied to the oven door for probably about a week, maybe a week and a half. And then we had just a delivery box set underneath it and they would constantly grab the string and then hop in the box and just play with each other. It was the funnest thing. So we have since recycled that box and now I've just taken the string off so they can just play with it as they want. But it was just like the funnest random toy. One thing that we used to do and we were really, really good about it all the time was actually unloading the dishwasher early in the morning and then throughout the day getting every single person in the house to actually put all of their dirty clothes directly into the dishwasher so that there wasn't really a lot of dirty dishes just sitting in the sink like you're seeing here. And I feel like we've kind of gotten away from that. It's easy to get away from those nice habits that you kind of set for yourself. But that's something that honestly made the biggest difference in our household and just in our kitchen staying relatively clean during the day. And it's something that I would really love to get back to because I do feel like it benefited us so much. And as always, if you guys have any tips on ways that you keep your house clean, especially juggling a lot of different things, as I know we all are, be sure to let me know in the comments because I read every single comment from you guys and I always enjoy just kind of bouncing ideas off each other and just helping inspire each other. You guys always inspire me daily and I am just so, so grateful for this community. Been 
feeling trapped down on the floor I don't know what for Feels like I'm gonna lose Silence takes a hold I can't let it go Chain up, no one knows But I won't let the stormy seas Throw me in open water Let me have my peace And leave me till tomorrow Wind into my sail Away from things I let go Floating on the waves We go bottoms up We go all the way When you're feeling down Push the pain away We go bottoms up We go all the way And face the shit another day We go bottoms up So one thing that I get a lot of questions about is if we like our single sink or if we wish we still had a double sink. If you've been here for a really long time, you might remember that when we first moved into this house, we actually had a double sink. And in our previous house, when we did a renovation in our kitchen, we ended up going for a single sink. And that's just because we actually usually use our dishwasher for a majority of our dishes. And I really only hand wash a select amount of dishes, like mostly our pots and pans and some of our utensils. Or on occasion, I will do a load of dishes by hand, but typically I do choose to use our dishwasher and for that reason since I'm not typically doing a lot of hand washing I've just found it so much easier for us to have a single basin sink but let me know if you would prefer a single basin sink like we have here or a double basin I, I feel like usually if you do a lot of hand washing definitely a double basin would be a little bit more convenient but for us, it's just a single basin sink all the way. Also, I've shared this in the past, but I did want to remind you guys, if you have a garbage disposal, to pop this little ring out. A lot of people actually don't know that it comes out, but it pops out really easily. And if you have not ever cleaned this, or if you haven't cleaned it in a while, here's your little reminder. It will be disgusting, but it will be amazing to see it nice and clean. You can't be on the table, mister. Lightning strikes by my window. It's my chest right in the morning. Like a warning. Could have slept here for days. I felt your heartbeat, felt your mind. So once I got everything tidied up in our kitchen, I just started wiping down the countertops. And as usual, I am just using my e-cloth with water. I love this little cloth. I feel like it cleans everything very, very well. And it also doesn't leave any kind of residue on your counter, which I love, especially when I'm going to be cooking in here in just a minute. But anytime I'm doing meal prep or food prep, I always like to make sure that I start with a clean kitchen. I feel like it motivates me to keep cooking in the kitchen. And it also makes my end of day cleaning a little bit easier. So everything is all nice and clean in the kitchen today. It is looking very good. I cannot wait to dirty it up while we cook. 
but it will be all worth it. So the first recipe that I'm going to be sharing today is called a one pot harvest chicken skillet. And as usual, I will insert the recipe card into the video as well as over on the website so that you can either pin it to Pinterest or just screenshot it and print it out from the video. And then once we're all done cooking this one, I'm going to have a breakfast recipe, a snack recipe, and also another dinner recipe that is only five ingredients and again, one pot meal. So super, super easy cleanup and easy to make. So one thing that I like to do when I feel like the recipe that I'm going to be making has a bit of ingredients, especially ones that you have to chop up, I will actually do all of the recipe prep all at once, just right in the beginning. And then that way, especially if it's a recipe that you haven't done a lot before and you don't really like have it all memorized, you have all of your prep done. And then we will start preparing the recipe and adding everything together and cooking it all in that one pot. So to make the harvest chicken skillet, I am just doing all the prep work right now. So all you're going to do is just go ahead and start chopping up your sweet potatoes, your Brussels sprouts, and your apple, and then also your onion as well. And then you can totally do this with raw chicken, but just to make it a little bit easier, and I feel like because a lot of times we have leftover chicken or we have like leftover turkey around Thanksgiving time, that's kind of where I'm aiming this recipe at. And so if you have pre-cooked chicken or turkey, just like leftovers or like I'm doing here with a rotisserie chicken, then all you have to do is just chop that chicken up. If not, then you will go ahead and cook that with your onions in just a minute. Next, in a medium to large skillet, you're going to go ahead and start rendering your bacon. This is totally optional, of course, you don't have to add this in if you don't want, or you can also just use pre-cooked bacon if you'd like. However, you will need to add a little bit more oil to this recipe just to keep it nice and moist if you don't choose to fry up your own bacon. Then once your bacon is done, take it out of the pot and leave the leftover grease into the pot. That's going to help season this dish. And then you're going to add in your onions and cook for about four to five minutes just until they're nice and brown and getting a little bit translucent. And one tip that I like to do is add a little bit of water if you're you're cooking with stainless steel and it will help to deglaze your pan and it will bring all those delicious flavors back into the dish. It is so delicious. And once your onions are nice and cooked, you'll add in your chicken. This is the part that you would actually be adding in your raw chicken and then just go ahead and cook that until it's done. Or if you are like me and using pre-cooked chicken or turkey, you can go ahead and just add that into the pan, stir it up with the onions. And basically the point of this right now is just to be warming this up. Next, you can just take your chicken out of your pot. You're going to be adding in your sweet potatoes, your Brussels sprouts, your garlic, and then also add in your cinnamon and nutmeg, and then give that a really good stir. And then you're going to add in between one quarter to one half of a cup of chicken stock, and just kind of keep an eye on this to make sure that the dish doesn't dry out. And if it starts to dry out a little bit, just go ahead and add in a little bit more chicken stock as needed. Next, you'll add in your apples and then cover this and let it cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until the veggies are nice and soft. I'm making sure there's still some liquid in here. If there's not, then go ahead and just add a little bit more chicken stock. That is looking so good. I wish you guys could smell this right now. It smells like fall in a pan, it is so incredible. Just with all the cinnamon and all the veggies and everything, it smells incredible. So you are going to know this is ready when everything is fork tender. So I'm just poking it into the sweet potato, those are done. And I'm just poking it into the Brussels sprouts, those feel done. So now we can go ahead and add in the rest of our ingredients. 
Once all of your veggies are fork tender, you can add in your chicken and the rest of your ingredients. This includes your chopped walnuts, your cranberries if you like those, and then also the thyme. Give that a really good mix and then go ahead and top your crumbled bacon onto the top and just stir it all around. And this dish, I cannot tell you guys how delicious this is. If you guys make one thing from this, I would definitely suggest making this recipe. It is so amazing. It also reheats really well and it really is a perfect way to use leftover chicken or turkey. You guys have to try this dish. It is so good. You have like the warmth from the sweet potatoes and all the cinnamon and nutmeg. And then you have the sweetness from the apples and the delicious chicken and bacon. And then the bite of the Brussels sprouts. It is just so incredibly good. And you also have that crunch from the walnuts and it's just perfect. So you guys have to try this recipe. It is seriously so perfect, especially for fall time. And if you do try that recipe, definitely tag me over on Instagram. I would love to see how you guys like it and what you think of it. But now we will go on to recipe number two. So the second recipe is not maybe like a typical fall recipe, but it is a one pot recipe and it is total comfort food. It is just so good and it's super warm and filling and it is going to be a one pot, five ingredients five ingredients enchilada dish. Okay, this recipe could not be easier. All you're going to do is add in your ground beef, brown that up, drain any excess fat or grease you have in there. Then you're going to drain and rinse your black beans, add that in, and then you're going to add in a can of enchilada sauce. Then you'll let that simmer for about 10 minutes or so. And then you're going to add in some corn tortilla chips, not corn tortilla chips, like corn tortillas that you cut into strips and then add some cheese if you like, and you're done. It is so good. I'm So a quick tip that I wanna share, if you are cooking with stainless steel and you're finding that your food is sticking a little bit, get a tiny, like you don't need much, a tiny little bit of water and pour it into your pan and it will completely deglaze the bottom and it actually just brings all of those little bits of flavor back into your food and it is so delicious and it makes clean up a breeze and it just works. So like right here you can see some just kind of sticking a little bit and you're kind of getting that coloration there. So here, you're just going to add some water and stir that around and you'll see all of that and all those little brown bits just totally go back into the food. So this dish I feel like doesn't really need a whole lot of explaining. It is just so incredibly easy and sometimes it seems like when you get a dish that only has just a few ingredients, it's not going to have a ton of flavor, but this one really does. It is packed full of flavor and it's so, so delicious. So this is another one, especially if you are in a pinch, I would highly suggest trying out this recipe. And you could even make this into a freezer meal if you'd like. I would just suggest not adding in the corn tortillas or cheese until you're cooking it the day of. But if you would like to just cook up the meat and the beans and the sauce and then get that all frozen, you could just thaw that out when you're ready to use it, put it in the crock pot or heat it over the stove and then add in your corn tortillas and fresh cheese and you are good to go.
So another thing that you can do to this once you're done is you can add on some toppings. You can add on green onions, which are really good. They just give it like a really fresh flavor. You can also even add on some cilantro if you like that. You can add on some sour cream, some avocados, just any type of topping that you would usually put on a enchilada. It is just so good and you will not believe like how quickly it comes together and how good it tastes. It is so delicious. So I would highly suggest trying this one as well, especially this is the perfect one if you're in a pinch, if you're just like not sure what to make for dinner, you almost always have a lot of these items on hand, especially if you just can start keeping a can of enchilada sauce in your pantry. It just is such an easy recipe, you guys will love it. So now we're going to move on to my autumn granola. This is like an apple cinnamon kind of granola. It's so delicious. And we're going to start making that first because that one has to go into the oven to bake. And then we're going to make some delicious apple pie oatmeal. It is so yummy. Okay, so this is everything that you will need for your granola. So you're first going to need rolled oats, obviously. You'll need a little bit of coconut oil. You can also use butter, some maple syrup, and then I just have some dried apple rings. So any kind of dried apples will work. You can also take this out if you can't find them or you don't want to add them in. Some walnuts, dried cranberries. Now this is kind of optional. You can either use just pepitas or you can use like roasted and salted pumpkin seeds or you can take all of it out if you don't like that. I just like adding both of these in so I'm going to do that. And then for seasonings you're going to have cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. And then I just have the oven preheating to 350 degrees. So the first thing that you're going to do is just melt your coconut oil or butter in the microwave just for a couple seconds. It doesn't really take long, but you want to make sure this is nice and melted. And then next you're going to add in your rolled oats into your bowl along with your choice of nuts. I am just using walnuts here. And then you're also going to add in the rest of your add-ins. So I am just using pumpkin seeds and pepitas. You'll give all of that a really good stir. And then you're going to add in your wet ingredients, which is the melted coconut oil and also maple syrup. Again, you're going to give this a good toss and then you're going to add in your seasoning. So you'll add in your cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. And this seasoning combination will make your whole house smell like fall. It smells so incredible. This is one of my favorite granolas to make. So once you give that a really good stir, then you're going to add that onto a baking dish. This baking dish that I have right here actually doesn't really need a lot of oil added to it because it is non-stick. But if you don't have a non-stick baking dish, then go ahead and add some oil before you put the granola onto the pan. And then you'll bake that in a 350 degree oven for 10 minutes, then pull it out for a second, just kind of stir everything around so nothing is burning, and then add it back into the oven for about 10 to 15 more minutes. Then once it's done cooking, you're going to add in your chopped apples and dried cranberries. If you would like to add those in again, this is always customizable to your liking. And then you'll just give that a good stir and then add it into an airtight container and just enjoy when you're ready. And this can be eaten as a snack, as cereal, topping on yogurt, just whatever you like. It is so good no matter what way you choose to eat it. Next recipe that I am going to share with you guys is one that I have made for years and years and years, as long as I can remember, as far as like me and a mom. Once I think once I had Luke, I started making this recipe and we have loved it. And what I used to do is actually double the recipe, make a big batch, and then I would put it some in the fridge and it's perfect to reheat over and over like for the next mornings. So you can just make one and then have this for busy mornings, it's perfect or you can just make however much you need for that morning. You can also make this in the crock pot, but I'm gonna show you guys how I make it on the stovetop, just because I don't always get up early enough to turn on the crock pot and get it going in time for breakfast, but that is another option if you're a little bit more put together than I am. But it is so, so delicious, and it's, again, a super easy recipe. 
So for this apple pie oatmeal, you are just going to take your apples. I like to go a little bit heavy on the apples, so I'm actually using four apples, but if your apples are really large, you could use a little bit less. It's just totally your own preference, but you'll go ahead and just chop those up, and you can also choose to peel them if you like. I usually don't choose to peel them, but that's totally your own preference as well. Then into a stock pot, you're going to add in one cup of steel cut oats, and then next you're going to add in a packet of spiced apple cider. This is kind of my own little trick on this recipe because you are getting all of the apple flavor from the apple cider packet as well but you're also getting the spices that they add into that so it just gives you a ton of way to flavor it with just one little packet and one little ingredient and then once you add in your packet you're going to add in four cups of water along with all of your apples and then give that a good stir put the lid on and let it cook for about 25 to 30 minutes or until your apples are tender and your oats are cooked to the texture that you're wanting So while I was cooking, I was really trying to focus on cleaning the kitchen as I went. However, I didn't do any of the dishes really. So I did have a sink full of dishes once I was done, but because I had been running my dishwasher, I just didn't want to run it again. And I know that a lot of you guys don't have a dishwasher, and so you guys love seeing that little bit of hand washing motivation and just knowing that you have a buddy to wash dishes with. So I decided to go ahead and just hand wash all of these dishes. Now one quick tip that I wanted to share with you guys, if you are struggling with cleaning your stainless steel pots and pans, is to use Bonami. I have been using this for a really long time and I love it so much. If you just sprinkle a little bit right into your pot and pan, and then add a little bit of dish soap. You can scrub it out so incredibly easy. It's amazing what a difference it makes, and it also makes it perfectly shiny and just like new. So I would highly suggest that if you have stainless steel pots and pans. One of the last things I do is of course to clean my sink, especially when I have dishes sitting in there. Sometimes I'll clean this once a day, sometimes I'll clean it a couple times a day. It's something that doesn't take a whole lot of time, but to me it just kind of signifies that everything is nice and clean. And also if you're cleaning your kitchen, I feel like it makes a huge difference in just how clean everything really feels in there.
So that is everything for this video. I have been so excited to share this with you guys, just some more cozy fall clean with me's and lots of homemaking motivation. And of course, sharing these delicious recipes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys have the most amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you are not already, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my very first ever Halloween clean and decorate with me. I am so excited for this. I've never in my life decorated for Halloween, but with the year being crazy and just what it's been, I'm wanting to kind of do a little bit extra this year and just kind of make our house really fun and festive for the kids. So that's what we're going to do today. So first, I'm going to be, of course, cleaning everything up and just making sure that we are starting with a clean slate. And then we are going to start pulling all of my Halloween decorations out and just start decorating for Halloween this year. And then once we have everything nice and clean and decorated, we are going to hop into the kitchen and I'm going to share three different Halloween inspired recipes. They are all super easy, super fun, and very Halloween inspired. So I'm really excited to share those with you guys, but we have a lot to get done. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. So I feel like I used to always start in the kitchen and lately I have been kind of starting in other areas of the house just because I feel like my motivation has been a little bit lower than normal. And so I think today I'm gonna kind of switch it up and we are going to start in the kitchen, which is definitely the messiest part of the house. So I'm going to go ahead and start in here and just get everything nice and clean. And hopefully that can really kind of get my motivation going and just keep me propelled in going forward with cleaning everything else up. So let's get the kitchen nice and tidied. So like I had mentioned, this was my very first Halloween clean and decorate with me. I have never really gone all out with Halloween decorations before. Usually I will just get maybe a few things here and there and just decorate like one tiny area in the house for the kids. But just with this year being what it's been, I wanted to go a little bit extra for the kids and just surprise them. On this day, Kyle had actually taken them out. I'm not sure even where they went. They just wanted to have some fun boy time and I knew that I wanted to get the house decorated. So I took advantage of that time and just really started focusing on getting everything nice and cleaned and decorated. So you'll actually get to see a little bit later on in the video once I'm all done decorating, the kids' response and the kids' reaction to how everything was decorated. And I just love that that it just totally makes my day seeing our kids and just how excited they are. But you'll have to let me know if you have ever decorated for Halloween or if it's something that you typically do or don't decorate for. Like I said, this is my very first year doing this, but I think from here on out, I'm probably going to start decorating for Halloween every year just because it really was so much fun to do this for not only the kids, but also myself and Kyle have just really enjoyed it as well. So I wanted to take just a second to share about this Lazy Susan, I couldn't think of what it was called, but I get questions about this Lazy Susan 
all the time, probably every single time I show like our dining room in my videos, but I actually got it from my mom from Costco last fall, but I just got their brochure in the mail. They have this back in stock, at least at some Costco's, and I think it's online too, but it's actually on sale right now. So if you have been wanting this like really nice, good size Lazy Susan, it is at Costco, so I would highly suggest going and checking it out. I know my mom got it pretty early on in the season and they sold out quick, so I would hurry and grab that if that's something that you're interested in, but I have had mine a year now and I love it still. So I do always try to link things for you guys, especially the items that I always get questions about. And one of the items that I'm always getting asked about are black silverware. We have had them for several months and I've loved them ever since. They've all held up really nicely and they're not chipping or scratching. And so I'm definitely happy to recommend them. They are from Amazon and I do have them saved in my Amazon favorites, which is always linked in the description box below. So if you're like me and you've been kind of looking for a good set of black silverware, I would highly recommend the set that we have. And like I said, it will be linked in my Amazon favorites down below. So I recently ordered a new sink station. I'll let you guys know how I like it. So I wanted to kind of set this new one up and see how I like it. I might go back to my original setup here, but we'll just kind of see. I feel like this one is going to be a little bit different, but it's also going to be a little bit more minimal. And so I think that might be nice, but I'll show you guys. I'll turn you around and show you what it is. Okay, so like I said, this is what I've always had for a really long time where I have my stoneware tray, bubble up sponge dish, bubble up dish brush set. And this is from Grove Collaborative. And then these bottles are actually from Target. They're oil and vinegar bottles, but I just take the top off and then I use them as dish soap bottles. And then I also get a ton of questions about this, so it's super random, but this is a hot water heater. So we installed that ourselves. And then this is what I ended up getting. So right here, this is just a stoneware tray. It's basically the same thing, but a little bit different shape. And then on top, you have this little dish station caddy. So right here, you can actually put one of these brushes and then you can set like a sponge right here. And then I'm thinking I might end up putting my dish soap right here. So I could end up putting that right there and have it kind of like that. Then I'd have my brush. And also for anyone wondering all of this stuff, aside from the dish soap containers, I get it all from Grove Collaborative. I do have a link down below in case if you're interested in checking it out. It gives you a bunch of like free goodies the first time you order. And then you can just either do auto ship or order as you want. But I will leave that link down below, but let's go ahead and get this set up so that we can finish cleaning and get to decorating.
in and out of love never get enough I feel like a majority of the time I end up just using our e-cloths just to clean off our countertops really quickly but I have found a spray recently I've actually gotten it in the past and I found it again this year and it is the Honeycrisp Apple from Method I believe it is but that scent is so amazing. They have it in dish soaps, they have it in sprays, and it just smells so perfect for fall. So I have always said that the Mrs. Meyers apple cider scent was my favorite, but I kind of feel like I'm kind of changing over to the Honeycrisp apple from Method. It is just so fresh and so bright. I love, love, love this scent. But comment down below with what your favorite fall scent is whether it's a cleaning product or if you don't have a favorite cleaning product scent, if you just have a favorite fall scent, is it cinnamon, is it apple? I tend to love both of them, but I definitely tend to shy away from the florals and I just love sticking with the warm apple scents. Been here a thousand times, set up a stage of flights, say we're done, say it's over. Shouldn't be coming back, but somehow we connect. Acting drunk, even though we're sober. All right, the kitchen is looking really nice and really shiny. So now we are going to move on to the living room. But before we do that, I want to show you how the little kittens are doing in the other room. I walked in for a second and they are sleeping, passed out, so cute. So I'm gonna show you really quick and then we're gonna hop on into the living room. We should be good, but we keep out of fires. Don't watch your feet, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep out of fires. Fires around ourselves. We should be good, but we keep out of fires. Don't watch your feet, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep out of fires. So if you have followed either over on Instagram or if you've been here for a while, you've probably heard me talk about it mostly over on the community tab here on YouTube, but Kyle's dad got into a really, really bad motorcycle accident a month and a half ago maybe, and he is doing okay, thank goodness. We weren't really sure for a while, but now he is in a rehabilitation center for a while. And so while he is staying there, we have his dog, which is Hank. So Hank is not here permanently. He has just been staying with us for the last month and a half or two months. I don't even know, I've lost track of time, but. So we do only have, not only, but we do have four cats and then one dog, Emma, but temporarily we do have Mr. Hank there. So anyway, enough about all of the animals. Time to get to clean in because I'm totally procrastinating. Would you be because we're scared of the silence? We should be good, but we keep out of fire. We keep on talking and talking, talking and talking. So anytime I show our dog Emma in my videos, you guys are always asking to show her more. And a lot of you ask like where she's at when I'm cleaning. And usually if the boys are home, she's always right next to them. She is completely obsessed with Kyle specifically, but she loves all of the boys so, so much. So anytime they're home, she is just at their feet, at their side, just hanging out with them. And so usually that's what she's doing when I'm filming. But like I'd mentioned earlier, Kyle and the boys were actually gone during this time. And so she had nobody else to hang out with but me. So as I was editing this, it was just so funny seeing both of the dogs just follow me around everywhere I went. They are definitely super, super sweet dogs. Keep thinking that I could have done something, but now I'm left with an empty heart. No making amends, no waking up beside you and holding you till we forget it all. Speak of the truth when it's tainted I fell into a big black hole It got me stone cold
All right, you guys know I'm always sharing real life moments and just keeping everything really real with you guys. So I'm gonna turn you around and show you how everything looks right now and look at how clean everything looks. And then I'm gonna show you up close of our floors and show you how you guys don't see so much even when things are right in front of you just because the camera does not pick up stuff. Just because you are seeing something on camera, do not judge yourself and feel like, wow, they really have it together and I'm a total mess because I guarantee you every single person has something that you're not really seeing that's not really clarified in the camera. And so I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you that just so we can all be totally real with each other. Okay, so everything is all nice and vacuumed and I feel like it looks very nice and clean. But let me just show you some up closes. So if you walk over here, you can see, like you can even feel like this is raised off the floor, how much like dirt is on here and it's stuck. And it's this whole entire big area. But when you come back, you can still kind of see it, but it almost just looks like the rest of like the knots in the wood. Let me find another one. Okay, so this is obviously not our floor, but look at how dirty that handrail is. But look, when you come back here, it just looks totally nice and perfect. You come up close and you see how it really is. that I know I show that stuff to you guys a lot, but I just like to share that not, obviously I don't love airing my dirty laundry or airing like, oh, look at how messy my house is, <laughs> really, you know? But I just think it's so much more important than putting on like a perfect picture and the perfect face like, oh, everything is perfect here. I just think it's so much better to be real with you guys and just let you guys know we are really truly so much more alike than we all feel. And I guarantee you, nobody has the perfect life. Nobody has the cleanest house. Everything is just a work in progress. So I hope that that helps you just feel a little bit better. I know sometimes when I see things like that, it helps me. So I hope that that can do the same for you guys today. But we are almost done. All I have to do pretty much, I think, is a quick dusting and mop. And we're ready to start decorating. Yay! I went by your house, what a big mistake. To clean our floors, I'm just using my E-Cloth Aqua Spray Mop. I swear by this mop, I feel like it works so, so well. And if you've been a part of my YouTube family for a while, you know that mopping is one of my least favorite chores ever. And so anything that can get me to mop a little bit more often is such a winner in my book. And this mop definitely has made that possible just because it is so incredibly hassle-free. Okay, to start, I actually got a little <laughs> witch hat. I just thought it would be kind of fun to get a little festive for while well, I'm decorating for Halloween, and I picked it up at the Target dollar spot, so I figured why not, and now I pretty much have a costume for <laughs> Halloween this year. So we'll see if it ends up staying on my head, but there we go, I'm a witch. This is something that I got that I figured I could dress up any 
type of fall decor that I have with just this little spider webbing. And so I really like this sign. I actually think I'm going to try to keep it here and kind of make it a little bit spooky and you know, whatever. Now that I have these other two items up there, I'm not really sure if it's gonna work, but we'll see. kind of played around with this and I feel like I actually really really like it. It still kind of has that touch of fall because it has the pumpkin patch in there so like a very fall soft sign but then it has all the webbing around it and so it's just kind of like Halloween is taking over fall. That's kind of how the vibe is right now and I'm kind of loving it. It's just really really different than I've ever done and so it's just a lot of fun. I think the kids are going to be super excited when they see it. I feel like I say this every single time I share a decorating video or one of my makeover videos, but I know a lot of you say that you get overwhelmed or you just cannot decorate space as well. And I would urge you to just keep at it because honestly, it just is so much trial and error and just seeing what feels right and what looks right in the end. I pretty much never start decorating a space and everything gets put perfectly the first time. I usually am just kind of like pulling things in, pulling things out and kind of moving them around until it all feels right. So keep at it, whatever space you're working on next, and I'm sure it will turn out amazing when you're done. So just if you are struggling with things, like I was feeling like that looked very incomplete a minute ago. And I think once I added the table runner, it just pulled everything together. This was just reusing the table runner that I had on our table previously. I have a different one for Halloween, but it really is amazing. Just changing up like one or two little things can make a huge impact. And so like, just like that, like the table runner totally pulled it together and make it made it look really, really finished. I love this. You guys all know what movie that's from. I actually did not see that movie until a few years ago. Kyle had me watch it and we've just loved it ever since Kyle's grown up watching it. So anyway, I'm loving like this little Halloween scene. It's totally different because usually I'm trying to make everything look really, really pretty and soft and Halloween is not pretty or soft. So I'm kind of doing my best to still make it enjoyable for me, but mostly fun for the kids. So I don't know, you guys have to let me know what you're thinking so far. One of the biggest things I got was, it's under here actually, but pillow covers. That is something that can completely transform everything, but because I have all of this just kind of sitting on the couch, I'm gonna do that later on. So for now, we're going to move into the kitchen and then also the foyer area. Okay, so I saw this hack on Instagram a while back and I have never tried it, but it looks like it worked. So all you do is you take your ribbon where you want to hang it, and then you're going to open the door and actually use a stapler to like staple the ribbon into the top of the door. So it's not gonna damage the door, like the top, but you won't see that at all ever. Usually I hang this up with command strips, but because this one actually, I'll show you. This one actually has a little thing right here that you can turn on, I just have to put batteries in it, and it lights up. Because of that, I want to obviously hide the box behind the door. And so I'm going to be using the ribbon that it came with and I just tied it a different way so that I can use that to actually staple the ribbon to the door. So I'm just going to kind of place this where I want it to go. I'm a little bit nervous about this, but we'll give it a try. Stapled in. That worked super good. I did two staples, one on each side, and it looks like it's 
Like it's secure, nothing else is holding it up. So maybe that worked really well. So dish towels are something that I always decorate for the season. I feel like it makes a huge, huge difference and it's something that's so affordable and easy to do. Another thing that I've found kind of recently over the past few months is a tiered tray. I know I'm a little bit late to the game on this one, but it's something that you can buy your tiered tray once and then just kind of buy a few little trinkets here and there, perfect from either Dollar Tree or the Target Dollar Spot. So it can be really affordable to decorate these for the season and it's something that's so fun to just kind of put your own spin on the season and add just a little fun and flair to your space without having to go all out. All right, I know I am probably one of the only YouTubers that does a clean and decorate with me and does not do a huge tablescape. And that's just because I want to keep it really, really practical. We actually sit down at our table almost every night for dinner. And so because of that, I don't want to be like removing a bunch of chargers and a bunch of place settings and like a whole big tablescape, which I will admit looks gorgeous when they are done, but it's just not practical for us. And so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do instead of that, but still to kind of make this festive. So I have put a table runner with like spider webs and stuff like that, but I'm also gonna do a few other things in our little fruit dish bowl lazy susan thing to make it a little bit more festive and still kind of tie in with the decor so i'm going to show you that right now so the first thing that i did was i actually got these pumpkins they have it almost looks like a little tattoo or something on them if you can't find them you can make them yourself but they are real pumpkins and they were just at our local grocery store in the produce section this one says boo yell this one has little bats and then this one is one of my favorites it has like a little spider web with I can't believe I'm saying this, but almost a cute little spider. <laughs> and so just setting these on or next to like an area like this, like with a fruit can make a huge difference. And then I'll show you what else I'm going to do. We have fruit in here, obviously. So one of the fruits that we always have is oranges and do they not look like pumpkins? So I'm actually going to just take a marker and draw little pumpkin faces on all of the oranges that we have so that it's still practical, we can still eat them. It's just on the skin that you're gonna peel, but it also is now kind of like Halloween because it's decorated like little jack-o'-lanterns, like little pumpkins. Drunk, I've never seen you clearer than now. We're flying high. Somewhere up in the clutch. We're going out of ourselves. Can you feel it? Almost like I don't know if it's real. Cause when we're doing our thing, we're the wheels that won't stop turning. So take me on a trip. Those little orange pumpkins were so fun. I did not I really expect them to be as big of a hit as they were, but I feel like our boys have actually started eating the oranges a little bit more often because they are just like fun and exciting for them to eat now, even though all I did is draw some pumpkin faces on them. So this ended up being a little bit of a bonus for me and having my kids eat a little bit more fruit. But either way, it's just really fun to see those little pumpkin faces on the oranges every time we walk by the kitchen. But here I'm just starting to kind of decorate the couch. I've told you guys so many times, but I love finding my pillow covers from Amazon and I'm going to link some of my favorite pillow covers down below, but they are so affordable on Amazon, especially if you just get some inserts or if you even already have some throw pillows, you can even just put pillow covers over the pillows that you already currently have. And it's such a cheaper way to change out your pillows each season. And it also is way nicer to store just a few pillow covers versus storing full pillows.
This is something that I got from Amazon and it's super cool because they're actually little bats. There's just a bunch of little bats. They can stick on to wherever so you can totally make like a fun Halloween scene. They have all different sizes of bats and then they have these little stickies that you can put on. So I'm thinking I might put just a few on the mirror just to kind of make this a little spookier too. So this is super subtle, but I think it's just so fun just having like different sized bats there. It just kind of adds a little bit of a spooky touch. I almost might move them and so that they're more like up at the top, just so they're not just like right in the middle. I think I might do that really quick, but I think they're really fun. And I think they were around $10 for the whole pack. And I wanna say there's like 70 or 100 bats in there of all different sizes, so super fun. What do you guys think? Whoa! Mom, look at the mirror in the back! Oh, the spider web! The spider web! Oh, that's cool. You like it? Mom, look at this! Whoa! I just have to be pillows! In the pillows, there's ghosts on the pillows! Yeah. And look at this one! Oh, that could be better! I think they're all chocolates except that one's a caramel. Mm. And a caramel too. You want a caramel? Look! What? Look! Look! <gasps> Whoa! What do you guys think? You like it? I like it a lot. We've never decorated like this for Halloween never, before. Yeah. Mama, I heard you changed all these pillows to be like Halloween pillows. Yeah. And you want to know what? Huh. The kittens are perfect for Halloween. I know, the kittens are perfect. It's orange and black. Yeah. Benji's orange and Felix the black. <laughs> okay, so it is actually the next day now. Once everybody got home, we just kind of got a little bit distracted. We ended up getting dinner and it just got busy. So I put the camera down and I decided I'm going to make the recipes all today. But because we were doing some really fun Halloween recipes, I wanted to include the kids in this. So I told each of the boys what recipes we're making today and they each got to pick which one they wanted to help me with. So first we are going to start with Noah and we're going to be making some pumpkin oat cookies. They are so delicious. They're almost like, they're less of like a sugary treat and just more of a healthy snack, but still a cookie. So they go over really, really well. But that's what we're gonna start out with today. Are you ready to make some pumpkin cookies? First we need oats, pumpkin puree, maple syrup. You know what else we need? Ah. Chocolate chips. Okay, put that up. What is this? 
Oats. Okay, oats. <laughs> Chocolate chips. Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Pumpkin. Syrup. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. You got one of those pumpkin oranges? Wobble, 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 This recipe could not be easier. All you have to do is add all of your ingredients into a big mixing bowl and then stir them all up until they are completely combined. It will be a bit of a drier batter, so it does take a little bit to mix together. But once you have everything mixed together nicely, you're just going to start forming little cookies and put on a cookie sheet. And then you will bake it in a 350 degree oven for 10 minutes. Looking at me, what we do, what we do, we need that. This is looking pretty good. Perfect. Once you have them all formed like this, you are going to pop them into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes. We are going to get started with our next recipe, which is kind of a recipe. It's kind of more of just like instructions on how to make a really easy, super simple treat. But I've made these for years, but I've never made a Halloween version. So all we're doing to make these Halloween is we're adding candy corns to the top. So we're just gonna be taking some pretzel bites, adding some little hugs, like the Hershey's Kisses hugs, the white chocolate ones. And then we are going to put a piece of candy corn on top and they're super yummy. These are perfect to gift. These are just fun to add into like a special trail mix type thing. If you want like a Halloween trail mix or you can just have them as they are. Any way you eat them, they are delicious. Just know they're very addicting. So be cautious of that. But I'm gonna grab Liam and we're gonna get started with that one. All right, so all we have to do to start is take the pretzels and just set them out on one row, okay? Yeah, you can eat and if you find like a broken one like this, we will just take that one out. We won't use that one, okay? Yeah, you can eat it. We're running out. Are we? Mm -hmm. Alright, so once you have all of your chocolates set onto the pretzels, onto your baking sheet, then you're going to pop them in a 250 degree oven for just four minutes. You really don't want to leave them in there long at all. It's going to be just long enough to let the chocolate softly melt onto the pretzels, and then we're going to add our candy corn. Once these come out of the oven after the four minutes, 
we are going to just start putting some candy corns right onto the top of them. And I know it looks like the chocolate is not melted because they're still formed, but as soon as you start putting these on, they will just completely melt down into like a little ball. And see how I'm just so softly squishing it down like that? Perfect. The last thing that you need to do is just let them set. So you're just going to let all the chocolate cool and just kind of harden back up. You can either do this on the counter, which is totally fine. It does take a little bit more time, or you can transfer them to a cool cookie sheet or like our cookie sheet is actually cool now. So then we can just stick this right into the fridge and it will cool a lot quicker, but it's just kind of like depending on your timing, if you want it to happen a little bit faster or if you're fine to wait. So we are probably going to pop these into the fridge and just let them cool for a few and then we will be done with it. The last recipe that we're going to do is kind of just a Halloween twist on a normal recipe that you might already be making, but it's going to be chicken and rice stuffed peppers. A lot of people just make stuffed peppers. You can make it with chicken, you can make it with turkey, whatever. So I've already made the salsa chicken. I've shared how to make salsa chicken in the past, but I will add a recipe card right here as well in case if you have not ever made it or you missed that video that I shared. So I'm going to be adding that salsa chicken in with some Mexican rice that I'm going to be making, and then we're going to add them into some orange bell peppers but we are going to have a Halloween twist on this and just make them really fun and festive. So since I had Noah help me with the pumpkin cookies and I had Liam help make the pretzel treats, I'm having Luke help me with this one. It's a little bit more difficult, not that it's hard at all, just the other two were extremely easy and so I'm going to have Luke come up here and just help me out with this recipe just because he is a little bit older and he really enjoys being in the kitchen with me just helping me cook. So I'm going to call him up and then we will get started with that recipe. Okay, the first thing that we're going to be making for this dish is the Mexican rice. So I'm gonna have Luke tell you what all we need for that. You're going to need some garlic powder. We are going to need some chicken broth, some rice, some diced tomatoes and green chilies, some cumin, and some taco seasoning. So I will share how to make it on the stove top, but we do have a rice maker and it helps you from not burning our rice. So we are just going to add everything into the rice maker, stir it all up, turn it on, and then kind of let that work itself out while we start making the rest of the stuff. So for the rice, we are just adding everything into our rice cooker and then stirring it up and then just cooking it under the white rice setting on our rice cooker. But if you were cooking this on a stove top, you would use the same ingredients that I shared in the recipe card, which is also all over on my website at thiscruisylifevlog.com. And then you just want to add that into a stock pot and cook it until it starts to boil, then reduce the heat and simmer, put the lid on it and cover it, and just let that cook for about 20 to 25 minutes or so. So next we are grabbing our peppers. We're just going to start by rinsing them off. Then we're just going to cut the tops off of them, just kind of like pumpkins. Then we're actually going to carve kind of like a little jack-o'-lantern face into each of them so that they look like pumpkins. It'll be like a Halloween. Kind of like peppers. how you do with pumpkins. Yeah. Like however you normally do your pumpkin, you do that. Yeah. And you want to kind of cut so that you don't cut the top off. So imagine mm -hmm. like where that top's gonna be. And mm -hmm. we're gonna cut it down a little bit. And then once you get that, twist, twist it.
Okay, now that we have our little jack-o'-lanterns cut out and emptied out on the inside, we are going to add them into our pot of boiling water for about five minutes, just enough to let them kind of soften up because then they won't burn in the oven, but they'll also be cooked fully through. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do next. So normally at this point we would be cooking up the chicken, but because I already have it cooked, I'm just going to go ahead and add it into a pot just to kind of heat it up, and that way we don't have to fully heat it up in the oven, and it will just go a little bit quicker. And this is the salsa chicken that I had made yesterday. All I did is I made it in our Instant Pot, but you can make this on the stove top. You can also make this in a crock pot, and you can honestly just cook this however you want and you can season it how you want. I want to name this guy with the square eyeball. Uh, his name is going to be Jeff. And this guy's name is going to be Gerald. Gerald? Yeah, Gerald. Jeff and Gerald. We Jeff have to name Gerald. the other two. This guy will be um, Oscar. Oscar. And then this one will be... Here, here, I know how we can name him. Whatever the most like comment on this video is, that's what his name is. So we got Jeff, Gerald, Oscar, and then whatever you guys decide to vote. This one, and then this guy <laughs> is gonna have a unique name. Okay. All right, now we are just heating up all of this chicken, like I said that I had made the other day, and then we're gonna add the rice and the black beans, um, and you can I'm just add those right what, into it. I'm curious to see what the most like comment will be. I know. <laughs> what his name will be. <laughs> that makes me curious. So another thing to keep in mind, if you don't want to make your rice from scratch, they have tons of Mexican style rices at the store that are just in the pouch. You can make it like that, totally easy. It's really easy since we have the rice cooker. I feel like it takes a lot of the work out. Kind of a funny story about the rice cooker and how I got it is I told Kyle years ago that I wanted a vegetable steamer. So I was just talking about like the, almost like a strainer that goes inside the pot. And he went on Amazon and ordered the rice cooker that said it had a vegetable steamer in it, which it has like the vegetable, that white thing is the vegetable basket. And I was like, oh, thanks. Like I was really happy that he did that for me, but I was like, that wasn't really what I was thinking of. And so I ended up trying it out. And ever since then I've been like, we have to have a rice cooker. It cooks our rice so perfect, so easy. And you can also do a lot of other things with it too. So we just kept it. It was just funny because it was like a total accident that I ended up getting a rice cooker and not just a little vegetable steamer basket, but we love it. That's kind of lucky. You're like, like, <laughs> like you were wanting a vegetable steamer, but you ended up getting a rice cooker. But then you actually try it out and you're just like, okay. Yeah. Like I, whenever we move, we need to get another one. <laughs> yeah, it ended up being, well, it's the same one. I've only ever had the one. Suggestion, if you cook rice like a lot, like how we do, like a lot, yeah. Then, um, totally get a rice cooker. It's it's amazing. <laughs> All right, this is how everything's looking so far. I feel like this looks so delicious. Now this is optional. You can add in some cheese to this, or you can leave it like this. I think we're gonna add a little bit of cheese in. The last thing that we have to do is just take our filling that we've made, put it into the peppers, and then we are going to bake it in the oven on 350 for about 30 minutes. This recipe is so much fun. We love stuffed peppers in our house anyway. So kind of adding a little bit of a Halloween twist onto this was just a lot of fun for us. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And if you make any of these recipes, I would love for you to tag me over on Instagram. I hope you enjoyed this Halloween clean and decorate with me. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you are not already. I would love to have you join our YouTube family and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.
Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing some deep cleaning in the kitchen. I also have a really big weekly grocery haul to share with you guys, and I'm going to be sharing some fall and Halloween recipes at the end of this video, so I have a ton to get done. One of the major things that I really want to deep clean in here is actually our fridge. It's a mess. I have not cleaned it out in way too long. And I also want to get some of the food that I got today prepped out and just stored in our fridge just to kind of help set us up for the weeks ahead. So we have a lot to get done. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. So right here I have all of our groceries that I picked up. But before I get into the grocery haul, I do need to do just a really, really quick tidy on everything in the kitchen just so that I have kind of a clean space to start with and a place to put all our groceries. So first we're going to tidy the kitchen, then we're gonna jump in the grocery haul, then we are going to tackle the fridge and start prepping out everything and then I'll share those recipes with you guys. I pull into your driveway, it's a Saturday night. You look like a million bucks wearing that dress I like. You're smiling, but there's something missing in your eyes. Girl, I can tell that you have something on your mind. But I will make you forget all your sorrows. Let go like there's no tomorrow. Let's have a drink, just relax, all your problems will fade. If you're ready for a good time, count on me. There's a party in the backyard, dance your problems away. I'm all about the good vibes, I know you're all about the good vibes. Do you know how much I love you, wanna see you smile? Where's the happy girl that I know with a heart on? So it's been a while since I've shared a grocery haul on my channel. These were actually the videos that I used to share all the time on my channel, and so it's kind of fun to get back into that. Before we get started with the grocery haul, I did want to share what is on our menu plan for the week. So on Monday, we are having chicken pot pie soup. Tuesday will be wonton tacos. Wednesday is Zupa Toscana, which I shared in a recent video. Thursday is smothered baked sweet potatoes. Friday is pizza and movie night. Saturday will be leftovers, and then Sunday is breakfast for dinner. So a few of those recipes have already been made into videos, so I will make sure to share my cook with me playlist down in the description box so you can go check those out. And then one of the recipes that I'm making for dinner this week will actually be in today's video later on, so definitely stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and jump on into everything we got today. All right, so this is in no particular order. I just have everything kind of spread around me. So the first thing that we got was mozzarella cheese, and this is going to be going onto our pizzas for pizza movie night. Then next, I got some mixed nuts, and this is actually going to be going into a little treat recipe that I'm gonna be sharing later on today. I also got some of these super, super cute, tiny itty bitty pretzels, and these are also going to be going into a treat recipe later today as well. The next thing I grabbed was some yogurt, and this is going to be for the boys for stacking. And then I also got some carrots. This will be going into one of the recipes for this week. And then I picked up some oat milk. I used usually get almond milk, but I just wanted to try something a little bit different. I've actually made our own oat milk in the past, and so I just wanted to try a store-bought oat milk and see how we liked it. The next thing I grabbed was some non-pizza, and I normally would have gotten a couple of these. However, they only had one, so I got this. And then I also 
grabbed this for the first time ever. It's like non rounds and I'm hoping that this will turn out well if we make them with pizzas as well, but we'll just kind of see. This one's kind of a trial this week. So majority of the time I try to eat gluten free and so I'm trying this new bread. It's called Canyon Bakehouse and it's just some gluten free bread. So I'm going to try this out this week and see how I like it. And then of course I got just some regular bread for the kids just for like grilled cheese and sandwiches throughout the week. I also grabbed some bagels. This is just such a quick and easy breakfast on those busy school mornings. I also grabbed a little bag of these pumpkins. Got these for a recipe that I'll be sharing later today again and then I picked up some ground beef this is going to be going for the tacos and then also the sweet potatoes that I'm gonna be making this week and then we'll probably have another extra one that I'll just stick in the freezer for another recipe later on like probably next week next I grabbed a pack of chicken breast this is just about one and a half pounds and this is going to go into today's recipe which I will be sharing again later today I also grabbed some celery this is going to be for snacking that we'll be prepping out later on and then I'm also going to be adding it into a meal so one thing that we love to do is we love to have homemade popcorn Corn, and so this is Kyle and the boys very favorite seasoning for that. It's just the nacho cheese one I have never seen it in a big big container like this Usually we have to get like the smaller ones So as soon as I saw this I just made sure that I put it in my cart and that is what this is for is just homemade popcorn This next item is something that's kind of new to me So it's the Classico brand, but it's sun-dried tomato pesto sauce and spread So I'm thinking of adding this onto our pizzas this week and just seeing if we can kind of up the flavor a little bit With something a little bit extra special. So again for the treats and recipes that I'll be making later I got a few different things. So I picked up these Reese peanut butter chips <laughs> I also grabbed some of the white baking chips and then I wasn't sure how much I needed but I went ahead and grabbed two packs of the Reese's pieces and these are going to be going into those recipes as well I'm sure we will not use all of them so we'll probably have leftover but I just wanted to make sure that I had enough I also picked up a few bags of frozen veggies I love having frozen veggies in our freezer especially just when we're having a quick dinner and I need some extra veggies stacked in there so I got this veggie blend right here that has broccoli cauliflower and carrots some broccoli florets two bags of the sweet corn oh this is not sweet corn it's just white corn hopefully it's sweet we usually like to get the sweet corn but either way corn always goes over very well in our house i also picked up some baby peppers this is going to mostly be for snacking i just feel like they're super super easy you don't have to cut up a whole pepper some brown sugar just because i'm gonna need them for one of the recipes today and i think i'm just about out so i wanted to make sure that i had enough got some sweet potatoes and again this is going to be for a recipe later this week along with some regular russet potatoes and this is going to be for the recipe that i'll share with you guys later today and we picked up some bananas of course because because it would not be one of my grocery hauls if I didn't have at least one bunch of bananas. I feel like our family goes through a ton of bananas. If we're not eating them fresh, we're putting them in the freezer for banana ice cream or adding them to smoothies or something. So I went ahead and got some more bananas. We also eat a ton of apples in this house. So these ones I actually get to keep on our table because they are a little bit smaller than some of the other apples. So I like to get some of the smaller ones. I found that our kids a lot will just go grab an apple and I'm not cutting it up for them. And when they do grab an apple, if they're grabbing a big one from the fridge they might eat a few bites of it or just like maybe half of it and a lot of it's going to waste and so I just like getting the smaller ones for them to eat on the go and then a total splurge I ended up getting these cute little Halloween sprinkles we have never gotten these before but I just happened to see them and thought these would be so fun in one of the recipes that I'm sharing today. We also got a little bit of just cold cereal. So one of our favorites is the Cinnamon Life. I feel like this is always a staple in our house. And then these ones I have never seen before. If you saw Liam's room in our basement makeover series, you know that he is obsessed with Minecraft. He has a whole Minecraft room. Honestly, both of the other boys also love Minecraft. So I thought this would just be kind of like a really fun splurge for them. The next thing I got was some turkey pepperoni. A lot of times we will opt for the turkey pepperoni just because it seems like it's a little bit less spicy and our kids are definitely not a fan of spicy foods so that's kind of why we go for the turkey one versus the beef i got some grapes these are just purple grapes a lot of times we go for the green grapes we just tend to like those better but these ones were on sale so i went ahead and grabbed these ones i also grabbed some baby carrots just for really quick snacks some baby cucumbers i love either these or the english cucumbers but these are really nice just because they already really small so you can grab one cucumber chop it up and then you don't have to have any waste or like store anything else back in the fridge and one of my favorite things to do with this is to dip this into buffalo sauce. I've shared this in the past when I used to share my grocery hauls all the time. Probably my very favorite way to eat these, but it's such a fun treat, especially if you like spicy food. I also got some sugar snap peas. These are one of our favorite, just like easy snacks. There's no prep to them really. You just put them in a bowl and you're ready to go. You can dip them if you want to have them as they are. And they are just really healthy and really simple and easy. Another thing I grabbed was some rainbow kale and this is already pre-chopped and washed. So all I have to do is see 
either stick it in the fridge if I think I'll use it right away, or a lot of this I think I'm actually going to stick right into the freezer, and then I will be able to add it into like soups, into smoothies, anything like that, and I just have all the work taken out of it, and it's really convenient, and it's a really good price too. The next thing I grabbed were some wonton wrappers. These are going to be for our wonton tacos later in the week. I love this recipe. I've shared it before, and you guys have made them as well and shared with me that you love them too, but they are always a hit in our house. Some hot sausage, and this is going to be for the Zupa Toscana soup. I have been loving hearing that you guys have been loving that recipe. A lot of you guys have made it and shared with me over on Instagram, and it's just made me so happy to see that you guys are loving the recipes that I'm sharing with you. The next thing I grabbed was some Hershey's special dark chocolate cocoa or cacao. This is going to be for a recipe that I'll be sharing later today. But I also got another splurge item. These are gluten-free chocolate chip brownies. They are frozen and I just thought it would be really fun to just pop them in a microwave and just enjoy them myself since I'm again trying to stay away from gluten as much as possible but still kind of have some splurges here and there. We love the Yogi brand teas. We have a ton of them, but we've never tried this one. So we're gonna try it out and see how we like it. Next thing we got is a bunch of apples. There are tons sitting right next to me. I'm just not lifting up the whole bag, but we got a bunch of these Honeycrisp apples. They were on sale today, so I went ahead and picked up a bunch, like probably eight of them, and they are really, really good size. So we're just gonna keep these in our fridge and I'll cut them up as needed. Next, I picked up some romaine lettuce. We've kind of gone away from making romaine lettuce salads and just doing the really really easy convenient like spring lettuce mix that already comes pre-washed and everything in the store but I decided to do it this way and just see if it kind of helps us eat a little bit more salads I think we're kind of getting tired of the other one because we've been doing it for months I'll chop this up and prep it out today next I grabbed a bunch of different berries typically we don't have a bunch of berries in our fridge just because they are a little bit more pricey but we are really trying to focus on eating healthy and just having like healthy fresh produce in the fridge easily accessible to kind of get us away from eating anything bad I got some strawberries today I also also picked up some blackberries and blueberries, some raspberries. So we are going to be stocked on berries this week and I'm sure that our entire family will just love it and they will be gone very quickly, but we will enjoy it. The very last items that I got were this box of like little cheese balls. So a lot of times we'll actually get things like this to give out on Halloween. I'm not sure exactly what's happening this year on Halloween, obviously, but even if we don't use them for that, our boys will enjoy just having them. And to go along with that, I also got these little spooky like Halloween shaped pretzels. Again, if we don't end up using them for Halloween, I know that our boys will end up enjoying them here. The very last thing that I got was this big box of chips. A lot of times if we're gonna get chips, we'll just get the bags because I feel like it's probably the best deal. However, I was talking to Kyle and I just feel like you're so much more accountable when you have things portioned out. This was on a pretty good deal today, so I decided to go ahead and just grab this one. I think it's going to be good because you're less likely to eat two bags of chips when they're just little bags versus eating, like it's so easy to eat half a bag of chips if you have like a whole bag. So that was kind of my thought on getting the individual portioned ones and it also gives us variety. So we're gonna try that out and see how it works for us. So that was everything for my Walmart grocery haul. I hope you guys enjoyed that grocery haul today. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've shared one. So it's kind of fun to get back into it. But now we have a ton of groceries to get put away and then a few of the things I wanna prep out and then we will start cooking as well. All right, I feel totally silly because I was thinking, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just put all the groceries away and then I'll start prepping out and I completely forgot. But as soon as I opened the fridge and saw what a mess it was in there, I was like, oh yeah. I gotta deep clean that thing. <laughs> so before we put anything away, I'm going to have to deep clean that fridge. But before we do that, I actually have a crock pot meal that I need to go ahead and get put on so that we can have that for dinner tonight. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that recipe really quick and then we'll jump into the deep cleaning of our fridge. Let me tell you, it's disgusting. All right, I'm gonna show you a sneak peek of our fridge right now. Da, da, da. I feel like it actually kind of looks like it's a little bit full, but we don't have really any produce in here and I just need to go through and make sure that everything is still good. We have lots of mess in here. Underneath here, I don't even know what that is, but yikes. There's just a ton of stuff under there. All of this is completely messy and just needs to get cleaned out. So I don't know about you guys, but I do not clean my fridge near often enough. I always have a really good goal of cleaning it like every week or all the time, but it just does not happen. So we are gonna get that done. But first, let me show you this crock pot meal. It's gonna take two seconds. It's a chicken pot pie soup. And just like all the other recipes I've been sharing lately, it is total comfort food and it is delicious. So let's go ahead and get that started. Will make you forget 
and all your sorrows let go like there's no tomorrow let's have a drink just relax all your problems will fade if you're ready for So for the chicken pot pie soup, you can definitely make this in your instant pot as well, but I am just going to be making it in my crock pot and it's seriously such an easy recipe. It is the perfect comfort food, especially for fall and winter coming up. So all you're going to do is just first start out by chopping your veggies, which are onions, potatoes, carrots, and celery. You can also add in green beans, corn, peas, kind of whatever veggies you like or whatever you have on hand. And you want to make sure that when you're chopping your veggies to leave a few of the potatoes just chopped into quarters because you are going to be removing these later on in the recipe. So once you have all of your veggies cut up, you are going to add your chicken into the bottom of the crock pot along with all of your chopped veggies. So a few hours later, once everything is nice and cooked, you are going to remove those big chunks of potatoes that you left in there, and then you're going to add them into the blender along with a few ladles of the soup broth, and then you'll also want to add in about a half cup of milk. I am just using almond milk, but you can use whatever kind of milk you like, and then you're going to blend this in a blender just until it's smooth, and this is what's really going to thicken the soup. And then you're going to shred your chicken and add that back into the slow cooker Then pour the blended potatoes back into the slow cooker as well and mix everything up. And then at this point, I just like to kind of season it with salt and pepper to taste along with a few other herbs. I usually go with just parsley, but you can kind of use whatever you like. Felt like nothing could stop us. Sunsets, remember the colors. They were wrong. It was way more than a dream. Yeah, over the hillside, it's alright We stood there all wide-eyed You and I floating on air in my mind Cause there's no going back, no going back There's no going back to your own life Okay, so for that recipe, I ended up doubling the veggies just because I like to try to get our veggies in a little bit more and maybe not do as much meat. So for that reason, I had to add a little bit extra broth, but the recipe that I'm gonna share with you guys will be the exact recipe, and then you can kind of play with it like I did if you want. But I did forget before I shared my grocery haul to clean my dishes. So before we get into deep cleaning the fridge, I'm going to have to tackle the dishes really quick, and then we will jump on into the fridge. There's no going back, no going back. There's no going back to your own life. Not living in the past. I'm feeling it tonight, riding on the dizzying heights. Remember the colors, they were wrong It was way more than a dream We climbed up, yeah, over the hillside It's alright, we stood there all wide-eyed You and I, floating on air in my mind Cause there's no going back, no going back There's no going back to your own life Not living in the past, we're over that I'm feeling it tonight Riding on the dizzying heights So 
here I'm just starting to put a few of the groceries away. I'm really only putting away frozen foods and then the items that go into our pantry. And then all the items that are going to end up going in our fridge, I'm just going to leave on the countertop and just kind of try to organize them as best I can on the counter because in just a minute we are going to start cleaning out my fridge and so I don't want to put them back into the fridge just to bring them back out. So that's kind of my thought process there. Now I have everything put away minus a few things I have over here that does not need to be refrigerated that is going to be for the recipe later on. And then I have a few things left out here that does need to be refrigerated. However, I'm about to pull everything out of the fridge anyway, so I just didn't want to put it in just to bring it back out. But I did separate things like these items right here are going to be things that I want to prep out. I want to start getting back into food prepping again and making it so that it's super, super easy and there's no excuse to not grab something healthy for a snack. So I'm excited to get that all prepped out. Let's start tackling this thing. have everything emptied out of here and it is so dirty just like spills and everything everywhere and I hope you can hear me because the dishwasher is running but this is gonna feel so nice having it all cleaned once again I'm gonna turn you guys around and show you exactly what we're dealing with here So when I shared our basement makeover series, I used this, this little steam shot. It's just like a little handheld steamer on our windowsills and it worked so well. There are some areas I already know I'm not gonna be able to get to in here. So I thought this would be perfect just to get in like those little areas kind of melt the mess off. So I'm gonna try this out and then see how it works.
It really is amazing what a difference it makes when you clean out your fridge. I feel like I definitely do not do this as often as I would like to or as often as I feel I probably should. But when I do go ahead and clean everything out, it just feels so perfect in there and so clean. And especially with the steamer that I was using, it just got everything almost new looking. I feel like you really couldn't tell that we have used this fridge for years. It just looked brand new once I was done with it. I know you never mean it cause you in the you had to cause you know I throw your suitcase out the window I don't need you here to feel good no I'm not angry I got better things to do tell your friends I will be just fine don't need no therapist there's nothing like nothing like wine I finally got it clean. It looks so much better, like a million times better. <sighs> it looks so good. I just don't really want to put anything in it now so that it stays this way. But I know in like two seconds, I'm going to put a bunch of stuff in it and it'll, it'll still be good. It'll be way better than it was. So I'll show you what it is looking like and then we'll start packing everything back in once I go through all the food. Anybody else have a thousand condiments? I just feel like we have so many jars and containers of things like that. And it's funny because I swear we don't even use that a lot when we're cooking. It's like I cook with salsa, I cook with garlic, we use ranch for salads and like a few salad dressings. I hate when you have a recipe and it calls for some strange, crazy condiment that you never will use in any other recipe. It drives me nuts. So I'm gonna be really, really picky with which condiments I use, thinking about which condiments I'm actually going to use in the future. I will say, however, we do have some doubles and we do have some things like just extra that we normally don't have because of our camping trip and because we've gone camping with family. So like they brought condiments and they didn't bring them home, so we just have them here. So I'm gonna go through all of it and just really like i said be minimal on what we are actually going to keep and only keeping what we're actually going to use nobody told me to settle down day nights and late nights don't get around but there's something about you something about you i like I should slow down, but maybe I'm escaping the love we found. There's something about you, something about you I like, about you I like. I get too drunk and too scared and lie to you. If only you knew I would die for you. One of us, one of us, gotta say. So these are the items that I am not going to put back in the fridge. Either they have expired or they are just something that we're definitely not gonna use. So although I do feel a little bit bummed out that all of this is not going to be used, it's just so much more practical for us. And it also is going to make me just so much more aware of what I'm buying and realizing like, do you really need this? Or if it's just some specialty sauce, is it something that I could substitute for something else? 
because then I'm not stuck with all these random things that I'm never going to use or things that are just going to go bad before we actually use the whole thing. So just a lesson learned, but I do have a lot more to add in because I do have all the produce behind me and some over there as well. So I do have to chop all that up and put that in the fridge so it's not fully stocked yet, but it's looking so good. So I'm here so far, we always put our milk right here. Salad dressings and sandwiches and things like that. I also have maple syrup right here. We just have jam um, and garlic. I always use that for cooking. This is one of my biggest tips for organizing a fridge, which I know I feel like I can't even tell you about because obviously our fridge was a mess before. We have like pickles, we have some dressings up here, like in bulk, olives, just whatever up here. And it's so nice to be able to have this whole space really used and functional and still be able to get out to everything easily. I have a big cell, so that's kind of the only place for it. But the rest of the items are things that are for meals this week. Like this is gonna be for the wonton tacos. This little thing of potatoes is actually going to be for breakfast for dinner. I have that pizza sauce right here. Here I'm planning to have all produce because this is like right in front of your eyes. It's gonna be easy to see, easy to grab. These are just some meals that we have ready to go. Here's like leftovers. Here we have a thing for eggs. Here we have cheese, which I feel like we never have this much cheese, but we did just go camping. So a lot of this was for like burgers or grilled cheese sandwiches or whatever breakfast. And so we have just multiple different cheeses in here. Here is our meat drawer. Again, a lot of this is actually like these two, I think we're from camping. Here we have our pepperonis, the sausage for the Zupa Toscana. And then back here we have some ground beef that's going to be for the tacos and the smothered sweet potatoes. The random sauces that we do use, but we don't go through them really quick. Then down on the bottom is more of like the kids area for most things. I do have some of my drinks, which are these little bubbly sparkling waters. These are from camping. So we usually don't have these in here, but I just put them in here. So I'll remember to use them. We have some cream cheese and then down here is butter. I just get it in bulk at Costco. Down here we have Lunchables. A lot of times we don't have these, but they were just something fun I got for the kids a while back. Then in here we have like fresh fruit. So here I just have apples for now. These are really great. They're from the Dollar Tree. We just have some yogurt, some of these little baby bell cheeses, some string cheese, and then this is cream cheese. This is actually just regular Greek yogurt. And the reason that I get this is for like tacos and things like that where we normally would use sour cream. I just get this because it's a little bit healthier and also we never go through a full carton of sour cream. And so just getting these small tubs have made it so much nicer and there's a lot less waste. Now that we have all of that done, it is time to start prepping the veggies. And these containers right here are ones that I got for the fridge. So they are just like some different sized ones and they all have these wooden tops. But I am super excited to get these in the fridge and just see how they work out for us. I have really, really high hopes for these ones. So finally, we are starting to prep out some food. I feel like I go in spurts and sometimes I prep out food constantly and then sometimes I will go weeks without prepping out any veggies or fruits. And during the weeks that I don't prep out food, I definitely notice that we make a lot worse choices as far as snacks go. So after grocery shopping, I just notice it makes such a huge difference if I take a little bit of time to do some food prep. So here I'm just starting out by chopping some romaine lettuce and you'll notice that I have a cloth in here. You can use a cloth like I'm using here or you can also use a paper towel but it makes a huge difference if you put a paper towel or some type of towel in the bottom of your container and it will really help make your produce last a lot longer just because it's going to absorb a lot of the extra moisture. So you'll notice that throughout this food prepping time that I am just putting a paper towel or cloth in the bottom of every single container.
of the food prep is just for motivation because a lot of it is very self-explanatory. However, one tip that I've learned kind of recently is that if you have celery, and I think this also works for carrots, if you are able to just put it in a container and then fill it with water, it will help keep that celery very, very crisp. If we are not going to finish it up very quickly, I will like to kind of change out the water just so that there's a lot of fresh water in there and it's not just sitting in that water, but it does make a huge difference in how long it lasts. So a few things that I wanted to mention right here, I always get questions about where I got my little strawberry core. It is from Amazon, so as usual, I will link it down below in my Amazon favorites. And then I also get a ton of questions about my strainer, and it is actually from Ikea. So I can't link that one, but if you do have an Ikea near you, that is where I got my strainer, along with a lot of these new food prep containers. I just love them so much, and we've definitely been enjoying using them. Oh, every day I got your back, yeah, you can count on me for that. So put your hand in mine, I will be there every day When you're sick of the climb, I will make sure it's okay I know you didn't ask for any of this But we reach for the sky, that's what flying colors now Okay, so the fridge is looking amazing, if I do say so myself. Now we are going to get to the other two recipes. First, I'm going to share like a really fun Halloween trail mix, really fun to do with the kids. And then the second recipe that I'm gonna share is a delicious, super dark chocolate Halloween cookie. It is so good and it looks so fun. So first let's go ahead and do the snack mix and then we'll go to the cookies. Noah, do you want to come help me? Yeah, this one in Wait, 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 we filled them? <gasps> we got more. Get the old pumpkin. They're all pumpkins. Can I please have one? Yeah, let's open it up. You can have one. So for this recipe, you are really going to be able to customize everything depending on what you want. You can change out the candies, you can change out the cracker type item that you have in there, you can change out the nuts that you add, and then you can also make as much or as little as you want and kind of change up the ratio as well. So this is a completely customizable recipe. It's really just more of an idea on how to make a Halloween or fall snack mix, but my kids have been loving grabbing this when they are allowed to get a treat. Next, we're gonna make the chocolate chip cookies. These are so, so delicious and super fun. Luke said he wanted to go ahead and help me make those, so I'm gonna call him up and then we'll get started with that. All right, Luke, you wanna tell him what we need? Yes, yeah, so we're going to need some brown sugar, some baking powder, some flour and some sugar, and then you're going to need some cocoa powder. Yep. And you can either have sprinkles or no sprinkles, it's up to you. And then you're gonna need some vanilla, some butter, two eggs, and then these candies are really your option. We just chose Reese's Pieces. Peanut butter chocolate chips, mm -hmm. and then white chocolate chips. And then white chocolate chips, and then Reese's Pieces. Thank you. 
So for the dark chocolate Halloween cookies, you're going to start out with a medium sized bowl and you're going to add in your softened butter along with your sugars and then you're just going to blend that for a few minutes until everything is nice and fluffy and creamy. Then you're going to add in your eggs and your vanilla and mix that until it's combined. And then in a separate bowl, you're going to add in all of your dry ingredients. We're just using a gluten-free flour blend that I love, but you can also just use all-purpose flour if you don't need gluten-free. And then you're also going to add in your cocoa powder. You can definitely use regular cocoa powder as well. We just opted for the dark cocoa powder just to make these a little bit more darker and kind of spooky for Halloween. And then you'll also add in, of course, your baking soda and your salt and then mix that up. And then you'll slowly add that into your butter mixture. And then next in the same bowl that you use to mix the flour, you're just going to add in all of your mix-ins. Again, this is totally customizable, but we are just using some white chocolate chips, some peanut butter chips, along with some Reese's Pieces. And we are just kind of mixing those up just because it'll be easier to mix it this way as opposed to when it's mixed in with a cookie dough. Then you're going to add in all of your mix-ins and then just fold those in until they're nicely combined. And then you're going to use about two tablespoons of cookie dough to form each cookie and then put them onto a greased cookie sheet. I am just using a silicone mat here, but you can use whatever you have. And last, you will bake them in a 350 degree oven for about 8 to 10 minutes. So once I had all of the recipes cooked and all of the food prepped out, it was time to tidy up the kitchen. As you can see, I made a bit of a mess here, so I definitely did not want to save all of this for morning. So I just kind of started clearing off the countertop, putting away the dishes that I had washed in the dishwasher earlier in the day. And then once I got that done, I started loading the dishwasher back up. I wanted to share that Noah was offering to help just because I felt like that was so incredibly sweet. But don't be fooled in thinking that my kids are just always jumping at the opportunity to help me. I definitely do have to ask for their help a lot, but they usually are pretty good at pitching in when we do ask for that. But those moments that they do kind of jump in on their own, it just makes you so thankful. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed all of the recipes I shared. Let me know if you'd be interested in me including more grocery hauls inside of my cleaning videos. I probably won't do it straight up grocery hauls anymore like I used to. However, I wouldn't be opposed to adding them into some cleaning videos sometimes if that's something that you're interested in. So definitely let me know in the comments if that's something you would like to see more of. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got super motivated to tackle whatever is on your list today. Thank you so much for being here. Do not forget to subscribe down below if you are not already and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Call